And welcome to When Jeremy Met Noms Justice League Warfare Special. I'm not gonna As lie, we- right when you said that, the background of your video, this giant light shined. <laughs> As you said it, <laughs> did it? <laughs> and it just shoots out everything right there. That was funny. Go ahead. Perfect timing. Yes. Perfect timing. Our Justice League Warfare, as we take the Zack Snyder 2021 Justice League and compare it to Zack Snyder's 2017, because there was nowhere on that movie that said it was (laughs) Josh Whedon's. Mm -hmm. And we compare the two movies and we sit here and we talk about it. We talk about the good bits, we talk about the bad bits, and we compare them and we're just like, eh, whatever. So you guys have already listened to, or better have, Listen to our Justice League 2021 conversation that just released today as well. And after you got through all that, you are here to listen to hopefully our Justice League 2017, our Josh Whedon or Joss Whedon's movie, which still says Zack Snyder. <laughs> but Joss Whedon's movie. You have watched the movie, you are here, you want to listen to what we have to say. And what I will tell you is that Jeremy and I went to watch Kong vs. Godzilla and said, so sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, man. That, that's what you're going to get. Yes. You know, just just, just yes. that conversation. Because we didn't want to put ourselves through this, but we did. So, for all the audience members, um, first off, you know, hey, Jeremy, how you holding up, man? Hey, Nam, um, I'm doing fine. Um... Yeah, what a voyage. What a yeah, voyage. What a voyage. For both movies in general, I just want to put it out there, for both movies, it's been a voyage. Um, from a movie that I was not interested, I'm pretty sure you'll hear that in the in the Snyder Cut version <laughs> of our show, <laughs> um, that I wasn't interested in watching this movie, but um, I feel like that we wanted to do it, right? Just to see how yeah. I felt about it, because I... I have my my issues with Zack Snyder in general. So here we are again, back to Zack Snyder again, and nothing has changed my view of that. (laughs) Exactly. So just a little bit of information in the background. The reason why we're doing this episode about the Justice League movies in general is because, as if you guys don't know, Zack Snyder wasn't able to finish the 2017 version of Justice League. He, unfortunately, left in the middle of recording of doing that movie, which by far, I think, was the first time that anyone's left in the middle of a blockbuster, like quite literally. Um, he left for, for for family reasons because his daughter had, uh, his daughter Autumn had committed suicide. And, you know, thoughts and prayers, you know, s- definitely not something that uh, you, you want to hear have happened to anybody, and, and especially for Zack Snyder. But Zack Snyder also has stated that, you know, he just wasn't there for the fight and he needed to be there for his family that he kept fighting creatively with the studios, um, to get his vision of justice league out and not so much their vision. And with everything that was going on in his personal life, he just kind of was like, I'm done with it. Screw it. Whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm done with it. I'm just going to go home, be with my family because of what had happened, which obviously no one here is going to sit there and say anything about bad about it. Um, but Jeremy, I mean, you know, questions off to you here on like, what is up with the idea that the studios keep in interfering with movies and directors in general? Why can't they just let them just do their vision? Money. It's always comes down to money, man. It's just more of like when to me, when it comes to people's vision, The question is, how long is it going to take to get your vision across, right? Because every day some money is being spent, you know, the and you really want to keep it cost. It's weird, right? Because if I was a studio head, I don't know how I would take it either in that way. You know, like talking about like I have this great vision and all this stuff. Like how much is it going to cost me? Because I'm investing a lot of money. And if this movie's not going to come out right, I'm going to be very upset. But I also understand from the director's point of view of like, you should trust me. You gave me the money, right? Like you should trust me. So it's it's a tough it's a tough world. So I think they interfere because of money in in the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think that's really the bottom line. Yeah, and I I, I don't disagree with you. And let me, let me say this for one thing, and I think the sentiment's probably the same with you. And I'll let you let you say your piece too. Is that I 
You know, good or bad, I'm always a proponent to letting the director do their vision mm-hmm. um, in a movie and not let not letting the studio heads uh, get into it. Because I mean, I think if you hire, if you the studio chose to hire this particular director to do this movie you have to trust the vision of what they're going to do. It's not like it's a new new person that's walking in to do this movie. So I, uh, I am a huge proponent, whether I like the movie or I don't, huge proponent of people letting the vision of that director be, which mm-hmm. still, FYI, by the way, don't care about the David Ayer's uh, Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Jeremy, do you have anything else to say on that? Or um. It's tough, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I agree with you should trust your director for the vision they have. But at the same time, too, it's nothing's worse than, you know, you're in the studio. They got, they got their vision across and they bring it to you and it's just garbage. And you're like, so we got to sell this, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So it's it's, yeah. it's a it's 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 a 50 50 chance. Regardless if this guy's experience and he has great records or everything like that. My example yeah. for that is uh Frank Miller. You know, Frank Miller was really good for Sin City with Robert Rodriguez, but when he got his chance to do his solo and that brought the spirit, it showed like you know, you know what I mean? Like some it depends on the situation, but you know, my yeah, it's money, man. It's almost like I think if you if I ask you, hey, give me if you loan me five hundred bucks, I will do something great with this, and you have to trust me. But at the same time, do you have the right to be mad if it's being garbage, <laughs> or is it oh, more yeah, like I, I, I don't so know? Too. It's tough. It's tough to say. I think so too. I, I think I think there is an as- aspect though that you have to let them do their vision and things. Like, if you want to see what's you know how it's going, instead of always throwing in your lines, because you know they mix up movies, they record different scenes in movies before they actually like put it all together and right. then edit it to where it works out. So I was like, how you know how 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 can you really tell like? you know, how a vision is going to be until it's actually the finished product, right? Mm-hmm. So so I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, if it's like there's got to be a little bit of trust there because if you believed in what he had sold you before, like this is what he had sold you, he pitched you, he had thrown you, shout out to pitch meetings, um, screen rants, pitch yeah. meetings, love that. Love that stuff, love that stuff. Shout out to um, pitch. But, uh, you know, if you do it in, like, a studio head, as a studio head and whatnot, you want to check in on it every so often. So be so. But, I mean, until – if he pitches it to you and you don't get what you pitch, then, yeah, take your money back, man. <laughs> yeah, I think, honestly, what's worse is not so much the vision. It's the journey to get to the vision, right? Because no studio yeah. wants to hear drama of directors getting out of with your actors, you know – there's yeah. there someone's an actor gets in an accident something that's stopping from the movie being delayed it sucks because yeah. nothing's worse than here doing an announcement a movie's been delayed because of such and such and you're like well that's not good because you know they always say for video games a delay eventually is a good one but for movies it's more like what's going on over there <laughs> you know <laughs> it's weird yeah. no, a delayed I- movie does not mean it's gonna be a good movie <laughs> Was, you know uh, what's sad though? A delayed movie is has a better track record probably than a delayed game. You think so? That's interesting. I, I have to compare the two. I, I have yeah, to- yeah, it's like we never we never really talked about it per se, but mm-hmm. I wonder like I feel like delayed movies seem to have a better track record. Yeah, well I have to I have to I don't sometimes I don't know what movies when movies get delayed. Like it was obvious in twenty twenty due to the pandemic, right? Where we start yeah. seeing these announcements delayed, but I don't know old movies where they like this was the initial day and they got moved back you know i guess i don't really pay attention of that yeah and i think a lot of the movies that do get moved back is not necessarily an editing thing but more or less like what they're going up against that's very true that's very true oh i wonder if that's not just a more of a marketing thing at times Mm -hmm. but you know what we'll research it we'll get it back to you guys someday (laughs) can i say one more thing I, yeah, go ahead, man. I, I just want to say real quick, that's why I would love to be the fly on the wall as in an editor room because they're the ones that put it together and they're the ones with the first judgment. 
You know what I mean? Like they had to edit it all together yeah. and then they have to sit there and think about like, this movie's not coming out right. How am I going to get this to work? <laughs> like, like it doesn't work here. You know, I, I, I think that's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. So I, I, I do, I do agree with you there. I, I mm. think, I think you and I have aspirations of wanting to see how that process works, just mm-hmm. to see how the process works. Yeah. Um, so after Zack Snyder leaves, they bring in Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon is not a rookie. Obviously, he has done blockbuster movies before. He was a writer on Cabin in the Woods, which is a personal horror movie favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. And he has done movies like DC's The Avengers, which we've talked about. Um, and maybe criticize uh, Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League to be more like. But I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, you know. It's it's good to be different, right? So they brought him in, uh, someone who was well known, and someone who was has a pretty good track record to do basically a hibachi of this Justice League movie to make it work out for for them. Now, talk about drama! Like there's so much drama that has been following Josh Whedon with this particular Justice League. Hopefully, I think the conversations when Jeremy and I have a talk about when we talk about this movie itself, there isn't, I don't think we're going to take into account what hell Cyborg went through, what hell Gal Gadot went through in this movie and what how their treatment is concerned. We're just going to talk about purely the vision of this movie. Um, but, uh, you know, it's 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 sad to hear, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of what Jeremy mentioned, Jeremy mentioned before, it's sad to hear that, uh, that's, you know, there are dramas and there's issues that there are things that, you know, they don't work. It's not like, it's not like a kumbaya, um, at, in the studio set that not everybody is working with everybody to make it work out. So mm-hmm. we're going to see if that if really affected this 2017 version of the justice league, the, Zack Snyder's twice in the credits, <laughs> just, <laughs> Justice League, um, Josh Whedon's Justice League. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about this. So this movie starts off with the kids interviewing Superman, which is can, completely different, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Can we, can we talk about the way that we're coming at this movie? Um, I yeah, wanted to kind of set the playing field here. So... For anybody that listens to the Zack Snyder one, that is the very first Justice League I have seen. I have not seen the Josh Whedon before the Zack Snyder. So, but Nam has seen it, but he kind of forgotten most of it. So I forgot it. Yeah. So for most people, I think it's gonna this is gonna be an interesting talk because the fact that we are going from the the original vision to the slender vision instead of the other way around. That's why I think a lot of people have gave Zack Snyder a bigger praise because this one maybe to them fixed the problems that was to Josh Whedon. As for me, I'm going from Zack Snyder to Josh Whedon. So it's going to be an interesting different point of view to see how my reaction is to the Josh Whedon compared to that one. So I just want to make people kind of clear that I didn't watch the Josh before the Zack. I went to Zack and now I'm watching the Whedon. So I think it's going to be an interesting kind of point of view. So. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. I think the one thing that we can agree on before we actually go into the movie is that the uh, the two hour time, the two hour time of this movie was uh, wonderful, was absolutely wonderful. Yes, I watching overall the film, I told myself, I think Zack Snyder could have brought his movie down, honestly, about at least two and a half. If you had to give him his moment, two and a half is the goal number for him personally. You, I think there was some stuff in that in the original in his vision that could have been cut, and it could have been down to that much. That's all I want to say about that. So, yeah, most definitely. So we'll actually go into the movie itself. So the movie starts off with kids interviewing Superman, just basically talking about Superman. Hey, Superman! This is where we add a clip here. You'll see a clip eventually. <laughs> Don't do hey, that. Superman. Don't 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 make it harder for me. Don't make it harder for me for my editing. Okay? Don't do that. There you go. <laughs> hey Superman, what do you like about America? <laughs> <laughs> 
so we get the kind of we get we get the Superman interview, and also we start off with basically a Batman scene. So I told Jeremy when we first watched, or when I was well, first watched this Justice League movie, is that you can tell, um, you can tell the styles between Whedon and also Snyder. Yes, but originally for me, I thought Snyder recorded this these scenes at the very beginning with the Superman conversation with the kids. But the one I really thought he recorded was the Batman scene where the Batman catches the the Bug Man and talks, and that's that starts off this whole revelation of what happened. Because as you see in that scene, if it was very comicy, comic booky, which is very much like a Zack Snyder kind of like feel to it. But I was absolutely wrong. It was a Josh Whedon feel to it. Mm-hmm. So we go from the kid Superman into the Batman scene, which is a complete different addition to this movie than it was in the Justice League movie or Zack Snyder's Justice League movie. Man, how did you feel about this? These scenes as far as like, did it work? Did it not? The Superman thing didn't work because it felt like, I don't know what it was supposed to do. I'm it to me personally. I don't know what that beginning was supposed to really show, um, because if you're going right off of Batman versus Superman, I mean, you know Superman is dead, and so they go to this cliff. Almost feels like they're trying to. It was before you, before Superman died. Yeah, I know, but I'm going off just if you're watching the movie, the movie. Oh yeah, you know after watching this, you know he died. So you're going back to this, going to this scene showing. That they're trying to trying to make Superman look like a good guy, kind of still. Anyways, I didn't like that. The Batman intro, I did like, and it. I feel like that's what was missing too. I think that is a scene I really like because Batman never really got an intro. He just kind of they just went straight to going to Aquaman in the Zack Snyder cut, and I felt like that Batman deserved an intro. Then leading up to start recruiting everybody because that that felt a little bit fresh fresher to me, so. I, I I like it personally, so yeah, I, I I'll give it a plus too. It's give this one a, a plus as well too, because I agree with you. The Superman thing, I think that was just kind of a setup before he his death, because obviously they do the montage of you know his memorial and everything everything right afterward as far as the intro is concerned. But the Batman scene itself was something i felt that was missing for sure in the Zack snyder's film mm-hmm. this scene and this scene itself makes me do wish that ben affleck had made a batman movie yes for later on as much as we get you know swamped with batman movies and superhero movies like i would have been okay with at least one movie that where he played batman all the way through and it was just batman and not superman and wonder woman interfering or whatnot so I would have loved to have seen just the Batman, just his version, Ben Affleck's version of Batman. And I did feel that this actually set up the movie. It made more sense to me as far as the setup for the movie because, A, we don't know where the insect alien, I don't know what they're called, those insect aliens. So we're going to go ahead and just call it Steppenwolf's minions or fly things. That would be just a little bit easier. <laughs> We're just gonna call them whatever. Um, but or aliens, no idea aliens. Where, huh? Or I was gonna say that, or just aliens. That would be fine too. Yeah. The, so those aliens, uh, he kind, it kind of came out of nowhere, but it also teased the fact that there was box, you know, the boxes, the mother boxes, and kind of gave us kind of an idea of that he's that Batman was actually. It kind of kickstarted Batman, right? Because mm-hmm. I think I think I think with the Justice League, this Zack Snyder's version of vision of it is is that he had already known that something bad was going to happen, but we don't know why he knew. Mm-hmm. So I felt like there was a better reasoning on why he knew what was going on here, right? Because the end, because the intro on the Zack Snyder one, you had it where he just echoed Superman, just echo his death in a scream. So yeah. it just started just spreading everywhere. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when after we go over that, we do the intro montage about the Superman montage. Next, we go to the intro Wonder Woman scene, which in this version, shortened, sweet, loved it. <laughs> I personally like this. I personally like this version of the Wonder Woman scene versus the Zack Snyder's because. 
there wasn't as much slow motion and she didn't do as much as she did in the Zack Snyder's version, but I think she did enough to make her look strong in she threw the suitcase or the briefcase out of the building versus flying out and then throwing it up in the air, which mm-hmm. I thought was more believable for me. Um, and it really kind of got straight to the point, which I felt was something that was fine because you were already introduced to her from Batman vs Superman. Like it felt that this is a quick introduction, a quick show. Hey, we're getting straight to business here and now. Mm-hmm. And it worked out for me. What about you? Um, I agree. I think the biggest scene, though, was in the Zack Snyder cut. It kind of it kind of contradicted itself in a way where you're stopping these bank robbers from blowing up the play, blow, blowing up the uh, the bank, right? And mm-hmm. and in the Zack Snyder cut, she ends up using her bracelet to make an echo to destroy a wall, and it's mm-hmm. like. And it's like, so you stop these bankers from doing a giant explosion, but then you do a giant explosion anyways to knock out these guys. So the, so the, the Wheaton one kind of cut that off, and I think that made it a little bit better for me. And that's the only big difference for me. Everything else, I think it was still the same, but I'm glad they took that wall explosion off because they kind of just destroyed the purpose. Like, I don't get it. You're trying to prevent chaos and destruction, and then you dig destruction. And then yeah. also cutting off telling the girl that she uh talking to the little girl saying you could be whatever you want that conversation yeah. and i'm glad like they cut that off because like i get it but at the same time it didn't really need it to it and it does nothing for her whatsoever yeah. and also too with that giant explosion and then telling her you could be ever anything you want i feel like it you kind of go in your mindset of like well she will never be what you she can never be you you know in that mindset weirdly enough i had to nitpick i'm like she can never be like you personally because, you know, she's not an Amazon. She's not, she's not an Amazon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and she can't do these abilities that you have, so I'm kind of glad they kind of cut that off. It just, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, like that part wasn't, that part was different. Um, like, like I think you mentioned the one with the briefcase uh, bothered you in the Zack Snyder one where, like, she jumps out of the building, flies out of the building, and throws the suitcase off. Like, I, like that, that in the time. That, it was the time too of like yeah, and they cut that time off. Like she would she would yeah. just go hit in slow motion and I'm like, oh wow, you have seven seconds left. You're like, you're that freaking quick. I was like, yeah. I don't get I don't know. Yeah. So. And I, I think the fighting the fighting as the way they edited it, the way Whedon edited it and this fighting kind of felt more of like Patty Jenkins' uh, Wonder Woman, how she fought in her movie. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like this thing where it was like constant slow motion and it wasn't so over the top i felt um that it that it threw me out of there so i mean i i did kind of feel i i was feeling this a little bit i felt that part a little bit more yeah um after that you I know mean, obviously we go into the intro of uh of uh aquaman and aquaman getting recruited by the uh by batman or by uh, bruce well, wayne tempting trying to attempting to recruit uh, to recruit him and there's a few differences that you run into here in the in that scene in itself um you run into the fact that where like a i think the biggest one that everyone's going to talk about is the the icelandic women they sing in the Zack snyder one they sing this song that to me i'm glad was cut Mm-hmm. Not that I was, not that I'm sitting there saying no, like they can't sing. It's fine. It just didn't make sense to me. Like as if they were trying to sing. I don't know if they're like the women in the Zack Snyder film was trying to sing to try to make it like you know he's a god of theirs and he's their savior, so we're gonna sing a song. Mm-hmm. Like it was never explained to me, and nor did, nor did it really matter to me. And it also goes with that same notion that Zack Snyder does nothing but like slow, like drooding songs. Mm-hmm. Um, but I liked that. And um, I think the only other real difference that I saw was, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne, there was a picture of Aquaman. There was like a portrait of Aquaman uh, and the boxes in the background in this, in this version 
and he talks about what are the boxes and stuff like that because he's seen the symbols of the boxes before but he didn't know what they were so he mentions it with aquaman but for the most part basically the same scene except for that and those two things man do you feel like those edits were worked out for you or just um yeah i think yeah it 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 worked with me it's especially the portrait that right there was fought that was the one i wanted because like yeah. it felt that's i don't know why that had to be cut in the beginning i don't know why that was not included in a snyder like i don't i i don't get it but it, it is what it is. Um, no, I think that makes sense. And the, and the sirens singing, I agree. I think that should have been cut. I'm glad that was cut in this one. Um, or at least it could have been somehow, like, if he was going to walk away, that song could be playing instead of him in the Snyder Cut where he walks in the, he goes in the water, then they start singing. Like, that could have been an awesome send-off as he was leaving. Yeah. And then cut it off. But in Snyder, they made those two separate scenes, and that's what that's what was wrong. That was wrong with it. So, or hell, singing when he was on saving that guy on the sh- on the boat. I don't care. So, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, right. Something something different on the intro. Yeah, because I do like that song. I think that song would have been great for Aquaman for for him, but they just didn't oh. use it right. So, yeah, yeah. You talking about the uh, the oh, girl singing? You're talking- Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Okay. Like if he was like sh- saving that person on the ship and then you just hear the singing. That would have been cool. And then whatever the ones they did. Anyways, go on. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> no, you're good. So we're going to talk about first intros because this is basically the next the next few things um, that, that people talk about the, the differences. The intro of uh, the intro of Flash and his dad um the next cyborg and his dad in the intro to steppenwolf comparably between the two i mean obviously the Zack snyder cut you got it you got a lengthier introduction to all of those characters and in the whedon cut you kind of got like a you know a like the reader's digest version of it so uh-huh. so how did you feel about these and how how did it work for you or didn't work for you cyborgs didn't work and i understand why because you didn't get enough information about the father i think honestly the zider the Snyder, Zack snyder cut to me it's more about the father than cyborg himself i know that's weird to say but he is because he is the key of bringing cyborg back and he was a key thing of the mother boxes in that sort of way um so you needed more cyborg for that, uh, and I w- and I kind of wished I would have. He should have. He should have left those scenes in there, of him, uh, you know, coming in like that. The Flash, though, I like. I like they cut off his intro with the the slow saving that girl because it did nothing for me. That scene watching this movie did nothing for me of who he is. Going straight through the father just makes perfect sense to me. Just like go straight here, keep him mysterious. Until it's time to show him. But showing him trying to get this job and then saving the girl in the Zack Snyder cut, it was like, it's cool. But, like, it does nothing for for, for me. It's not like she comes back in the picture. He's not on, You don't hear it anymore after that scene. Nothing. So, to me, cutting that scene for Flesh intro, this this going straight to his father it was better for me personally. So Yeah. I, I like the I like the specifics on uh, I like the quickness on the flashes uh, the flash uh, the flashes and Whedon's uh, intro mostly because yes it wasn't too much but it's fine because you really kind of just went straight to the heart of the matter and learned about the the relationship between Flash and his father and then just kind of go from there. Because you kind of are, I think most people who went to watch these movies already kind of knew what all the superpowers were. But I think you were saving, you got a chance to save like the flashes, like a uh, speed run and all that stuff. Um, and I would like to little... also, and I also like to say though that thank, thank you for actually showing me how fast he is when he did that marker on that guy's face before he went to go visit yeah. the father. I'm like, thank you. Like, I want to see how fast he is, not how slow. He's going as fast as he is. Like, yeah. Like, show me speed. 
that's what I came for. So yeah. anyway, go on. I think that, I think that was definitely one of the things here too is like the slow motion, the slow motion in Zack Snyder's original original cut versus Whedon's uh, cut. Um, it it meant more in Whedon's cut than it did in uh, Snyder's cut. So I like the fact that Whedon kept with a lot of the speed and some of the things that they did, like Aquaman swimming off, like uh, like um, the Flash doing his thing too as well. I agree. As far as Cyborg is concerned, I, I understand why there was such a want to put more of a backstory on Cyborg and his father and stuff like that. But to me, Cyborg still isn't a very interesting character to me. Like, mm-hmm. to me, I think it, he's like in this in this in. In DC's version, he is supposed to be like Vision and Iron Man all in one. And it just doesn't work for me. So if it were somebody else, maybe, but I really, I still, I still find myself not caring about Cyborg all that much. Would you agree that you were, you were more connecting with the father? Because I feel like that's what it was to me personally. It was really the connection with his father because his father was you know, the one that was really focused on the mother box and everything about it and with Cyborg. And I think if the father didn't exist at all, even if you gave Cyborg a bigger length, if he didn't have the father involved, he would he wouldn't be as bright as I would think he is. But the father was very important. And you notice when his father was not in this and much in this movie, you know, Cyborg kind of just was just there. Yeah. Compared to Zack Snyder's cut of it. So, yeah, which is a weird thing, right? Because like between the two movies, I think they did a great job of explaining the mother boxes. But them two separately, I think they both did a piss poor job of explaining the mother bo- mother boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, like I think we talked about it. Uh, like I feel like the mother blo- box versus like you know the Infinity Gauntlet versus whatever is just kind of like a tired trope. Like, well, if you get these mother boxes together, they're going to become this unity who's going to destroy the world and merge whatever. And you're just kind of like, all right. So I, I think I was just tired of that, the idea of the tropes in general. And I think in this aspect, you're right. Like the Snyder Cut did a better job of explaining the importance of the mother box to Cyborg, to the story and his father, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um. So Zack Snyder's cut was a way better explanation on that. But as far as me caring about the characters and even the mother box in general, it just, I think I just didn't care about it enough to okay. actually really want to continue it all that, to, all that, all that great. Then let's talk about the intro to Steppenwolf, which basically you get the same intro to Steppenwolf both in this one and also in Zack Snyder's Justice League. The key difference being when they got presented, which in the Snyder Cut, you got presented with Steppenwolf pretty early in the movie. And then in the Whedon Cut, you got presented probably about a third into the movie, I think. Yeah. And the look. Yes. The look of Steppenwolf, man. What are your thoughts? Because I, I know you said you like the Snyder's version. So I, this is my, th- let me put it like this. I like the Snyder Cut one, but I like the Whedon one too. What I, my dream, if you can get the Whedon edition with the, with the outfit of the Snyder one, because Snyder's character design for Seb Wolf is 10 times better than Whedon's, hands down. But Josh Whedon's, determination of Steppenwolf just being evil, I accept that too. He's like, I don't think you have to really explain. I mean, he's been told to come here, destroy the world, move on. Evil. Let's just go with that, right? Like, that. I'm fine with that. And I like the fact that he's the backstory, not Darkseid. I, I like how Darkseid doesn't exist yet. He's in talk. Having Steppenwolf go back in the past that they had to defeat Steppenwolf because of the mother boxes makes more sense. Because here's this is why. Seven Wolf failing to do it the first time with those mother boxes gave the punishment of from Dark Side. Like you have failed me. You gotta go now expl- go to five thousand other planets and do the same thing. Him coming back here feels like a second chance. Uncompared to Snyder Snyder's cut, the most ruthless person could not take down this planet. Then he decides to go away. 
And then he says Stephen will do it. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't. That does not make sense to me. Why Stephen? I mean, Darkseid would do that. Darkseid would just not give up, lose a fight, and he's like, "I'll get you back in thousand. I mean, plus years." No, Darkseid would just keep going at it. So having Stephen Wolf in this in the the Wien cut replacing Darkseid the ending, I mean in that final battle going against the Atlanteans, the Amazons, and the gods made way more sense to me of showing how powerful he is right there. I I, I feel like that makes better sense than having Darkseid be in that spot. What do you think? I, I like the fact they did they didn't show Dark Side in this one, and I actually didn't mind the character design so much in Whedon's cut. I think everyone's gonna sit there and be like, "You're an idiot! How dare you not dislike the thing? Of, the thing about the Whedon cut is that he seems more grungy, darker. I I I, I kind of disagree, only because at least. At least in the Zack Snyder cut one, he looks a little bit more threatful to me than this one. This one, he just kind of looks like, I don't know. It looks like kind of like, that's the, if I don't know. It feels like a rookie kind of like amateur outfit that they did for him. I mean, apparently well, you have no problem with it. But I like the fact that in the Snyder cut, he looks a little bit more threatful with the spikes and everything. Well, so that was that was one of the things. Is like the outfit in the uh, Justice League, Zack Snyder one, looks a little bit more imperial and rich. Yes. To me. Mm. And in this one, it doesn't bother me is what I'm saying. It doesn't bother me either way. But in this one, he looks a little bit more grungy as far as like like he's been through ten, like 10,000 planets and he's been he's been fighting, you know, like someone who's been like you can look at him and just tell that he's been in battles. Right. Is yeah, what I, I'm saying. I guess he doesn't look th- as much threatful than the other one, I guess. If I saw the seven wolf and jungle, I'm like. You really don't look that threatful. Like you gotta look, yeah. Threatening. Yeah, yeah, you don't look. Like, you don't look threatening to me compared to the Snyder cut. The Snyder one looks a little more threatening to me. So yeah, like I was like, like yeah, I could take it either way. I mean, I I like the Zack Snyder cut as far as like the costume designs and stuff yeah. like that. But I also kind of like how I don't know. I felt like he was more of a smart ass in this one. No, I'll give you that. Way. He was a straight evil, right? You know, yeah, he didn't have yeah. a he didn't really have a like a heavy modem. You didn't see that emotion of it because I felt that the Josh Whedon cut of the Steppenwolf felt more threatening than the Snack Snyder cut, and only because he replaced Dark Side for that giant explosion part. that made him feel more threatening. That mm-hmm. no one could. He, it took a whole army to take that person down. Try to take yeah. that person down. They did. He's gonna get revenge. But if you, mm-hmm. it's not believable with Dark Side to me. Dark Side is yeah. pretty freaking powerful. So you to wound him like that and and him give up on the mother boxes that easily, and then then he sends an underling to do that doesn't mm-hmm. make sense to me. But Stephen will no, be, I, but Stephen will be in there beforehand, and then he gets kicked off, gets punished by Dark Side, and he's coming back to redeem himself. That it makes more sense to me. So yeah, yeah, and I'll give you that too because mm-hmm. like there's something about the weeding cut that I felt more i felt more in in just like his grunginess and his his ordeal where he he just seemed a little bit more um characteristic but i like the design design a little bit more in uh the zack snyder as far as like the costume and stuff like that too as well and i guess i guess for like for the listeners if you are disagreeing with me let me give you a better example of that if you imagine thanos coming down in that scenario and he gets his ass kicked and he leaves is it really believable he was sent an underling to come finish the job? No. <laughs> it's a pride thing. Like, if I got my bucket, like, I'm not gonna send somebody else. I gotta go get my I gotta go get my pride back. Like, I'm the master. Everybody's following me. I'm the boss. And I'm getting smacked around. No, nah, you can't go off like that. I'm not gonna be like, nah, I'm, I got my ass kicked. I'm gonna need you to go down there and handle this business for me. Okay. I it just it doesn't work for me. And Dark Side. You're building up this guy. I guess that's the thing I mentioned from the, the Snyder Cut, right? Like, Darkseid's supposed to be a buildup. He's supposed to be this big mama jamma. And you show him and he loses like that? That doesn't make sense yeah. to me. So. Yeah, I, I agree. It's like, I, I think, I think this, I think Whedon holding back on Darkseid on this one gives Darkseid a better, yes, a better view. It's like, I know people are excited and want to see Darkseid, but there are things about storytelling that you have to wait and let anticipate. Cause I mean, 
just look at the movies where they try to pull the, the major villain into the movie and then it doesn't work out like Apocalypse for the X-Men series, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah. you missed it. Yep. Apoc- Apocalypse for the X-Men series. And it's, uh, I think there's a few other movies that, uh, like, especially the X-Men movies where you, like Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Where you try to, you, you try to show somebody because that's what the fan service is require, asking you to do. Yeah, and, and holding I, off a little bit some more. And I'm, I, I guess I'm the old school person where, like, if you're going to plan to do a trilogy... You always save the best for last, right? Yeah. Stephen Wolves round one. They, yeah. if now if you want to in the second movie, you can show a little glimpse of Dark Side, but don't show him too much. But just show him how threatening he looks as he sends the next person down. Then the third one is like, I guess I gotta do this myself. You know, that kind of that kind of build up. That's what I like. Yeah. Hype me up. Yeah. So So like again, this is Stephen Wolf's intro, which is also meant. This is the intro, really, to the Amazon Amazon uh, Amazon ladies who who fought a war with a who had the whole fight scene, which is basically pretty much the same thing. The difference is where they put the movie or put the put the spots at. Like I said, this doesn't come until about the first third of the movie, and in Zack Snyder's Justice League, it came like literally at the very beginning of the movie, more or less. Mm-hmm. Which leads to which leads to the next thing where we talk about the Great War. Now wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. wait. Before the Great War, did you like the fact that he Stephen Wolf and the Josh Wynn just bust through the temple wall and just went after them, or did you like the Zack Snyder where they tried to destroy the temple in the water and then he made it out and went after them? Oh, I like the fact that he just busted through. Okay, (laughs) okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, like because it just it just means he's more threatening to me. I like, like the Snyder one, so you you like the uh, I like when they try to like destroy the temple and everybody in there. Cause I feel like that, like you know, they it felt like more like they they're willing to sacrifice their own their own people to make sure he dies, and then he makes it out of it like was nothing, right? I like that instead of in the Josh Whedon, he's like, well, looks like everybody's fine. I'm out. Boom, Kool Aid man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't well, know. <laughs> I like I like the, the weeding part because it was quick and to, kind of like to the point. Like they okay. were just like they they just got together. Just like closed the doors, so they closed they closed off. They busted out the thing, and tried to cave into the they mm. cave in the thing. Because let's let's be honest with ourselves, it wasn't going to work one way or the other. Yeah, but I think they wanted to make it really feel for it, right? In this in the Snyder cut, like really feel these Amazon were really fighting for their life for this for this chess and i think i kind of appreciate that particular scene instead of showing oh they run out boom move on you know like these i guess because like i really i wish they showed the mother box a little bit more appreciation the wheaton one because more is like they really treat the boxes are just boxes like here it is Mm. (laughs) at least there it felt like they were really fighting so it's like oh that box must be really important so that's why i prefer the snyder cut yeah, the the thing about the boxes though is like even with Snyder cut and actually the Whedon cut, like until like you had to go into a whole story on the boxes to actually make the boxes mean something. Okay, that's why it was just such a tired trope to me because it's like the Infinity Gauntlet and the stones, like they had to go and talk about that too as well. But they used multiple movies to build up why that was. Okay. So special, and they use multiple movies to build up each particular stone, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I well, in this one, they were just like, "All right, well, we got to catch up." So here you go. This is what, and that's what kind of drew me. Where I was just like, "All right, so I don't, I don't." These boxes do something powerful, apparently. <laughs> okay. All right. But uh, that that was that was the only thing that I think that was more me. That's more me just disliking the idea of using the boxes as such a such a powerful threat where it means nothing to me because I really have no idea what they are. And I don't know, I hadn't read the comic books and I know they, they're a part of the comics and all that stuff. But for someone who's never really read the comics, as far as like that's concerned and going into it, it's like, if I'm just a normal viewer, then how are you going to make it to where it means something to me? And yeah, the Snyder cut does a better job of it because it spends three hours talking about it. <laughs> But uh, 
you know, in this aspect, you know, I'm, I'm more of as like, let's build this villain up because now you're just showing a villain who's, yeah. who has been, I'll give you that. I, anything. I'll give you that. You know? I think it is tiresome that it always has to come down to pieces that will threaten the world instead of just one bad person comes and wants to destroy the world. You yeah. know, I mean, and that's why I probably prefer like for this one. That's why like in the Snyder cut, you'll hear me talking about that a Green Lantern would have been an awesome way to intro him about Darkseid instead of these mother boxes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't, I think we didn't start the start of this movie. We didn't did a better job of making Steppenwolf seem more formidable. Yes. I think they both did a bad, I think Snyder overall does a better job of making Steppenwolf just a villain, but I think they both did a, relied on the boxes a little bit too much for okay. me to care one way or the other. Okay. So like if they ever did like a Gorilla Grodd or the Dark or the or um, the Injustice League or whatever, that's which we'll talk about. I hope that they focus on just the villains there instead of making it such a big trope of like, oh, we got to collect something to destroy the world. Right. Right. Okay, we got it. We got it. Um, as far as I was talking about the Great War, I mean, you talk. Zack Snyder goes in more in depth in the Great War and the fact that Wonder Woman had to learn what the Great War was mm -hmm. through the Arrow. Was in Josh Whedon, she already knew and had to explain this to Batman. So for the most part, she knew in Whedon, but she had to learn in the Justice League, and you get to see her learn about it. How did you feel the difference between the two? What the Josh? Made sense okay, so the Josh Whedon comes off for Wonder Woman as why are you keeping, why didn't you tell me this sooner? That aspect, right? Because it's like, I knew about this. Here's the story. Like, in that outlook, right? Can I be like, well, I feel like you could have told me this like a long time ago, like the way she portrayed it. But at least in the Zack Snyder, her learning about Dark Side helps us for the listeners or the listeners and watchers that, okay, we're learning what she's learning. You know? Because you can tell from the Josh Whedon cut is more of like, you're going to learn as we go. All right, you'll put two and two together. I trust you'll put two and two together. Here, Zack Snyder is more like, I really want you to understand why this is important. And so and that's why they want one woman to really learn this. So, she, so it makes a better conversation to tell Bruce Wayne, why is this, I guess. Um, if I had to choose which one I prefer... Um, Sadly enough, I would see it's weird. I like the Wonder Woman learning about Dark Side. But I like the Grey War scene better in in Wheaton's. As I said, Steppenwolf was uh, in the Dark Side. The there. war scene was in the war scene was in the uh, Zack Snyder's, right? Yes, in the replacement for, instead so you had Dark Side on the battlefield and Wheaton was oh, yeah. still Steppenwolf. Oh, I got so you. I, I got like you. I like Wonder Woman to learn about Dark Side in the temple. But mm. when she tells the story, I wish it, I wish it was the Wheaton talking about Darkseid's coming, but then he sent the first person named Steppenwolf. Maybe that would have been a little bit better to say. Gotcha. That's what I that's what I wish. So I gotcha. Mm. I actually so it, it sounds like I'm just like in love with Whedon's cut. I'm I'm not, but I actually kind of like the Whedon's cut on this one, where Wonder Woman there was a folk a folklore that Wonder Woman knows about which is is it was is which is within the realm of her character because there's a bunch of folklores and stuff whether it's the patty jenkins movies where she knows about you know certain things like you know the war the the, the god of war and whatnot and it sounds so mythical that you're you're not quite sure whether you believe it or not right mm -hmm. and that she already knew about this stuff and the fact that it didn't trigger her to tell you know, Batman or whatnot was that, um, you know, you didn't find out about it and she didn't find out about it until like the box being stolen until like one of the, the queen, her mom shot the arrow to the thing that started to burn down the, the cathedral or the, the mm -hmm. monument that triggered her to like, Oh, okay. So that, that worked out for me because that made more sense to me. Right. Because the mom said, it's like, well, man won't understand what what's going on, but she will. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she got the arrow and she had to learn everything in Snyder's cut 
and she didn't just know that folklore compared to Whedon's cut. I felt she was smarter in Whedon's cut because she already knew. She saw the arrow. This told her, all right, the prophecies are coming true. I need to, you know, talk to Batman about this or Bruce Wayne. Because her her interaction with Bruce Wayne didn't really start until this one, this part right here. Where she breaks into the Batcave and she actually talks to Batman about the actual war and why he's searching, why he's starting to see the boxes. And so he can understand about the boxes a little bit more too, because he's still trying to piece it together like a detective is in a, in a movie. And I think in Zack Snyder's cut, he didn't know anything about it. He just knew that there was something coming. Yeah. He had this great intuition. Yeah. That's why I think Wheaton really just wanted, like for you, you put that all together. You kind of put two and together. And I think that's what he was trying to aim for. Zack Snyder really wanted to build lore. Yeah. So his is more lore. And he wanted the audience to be along for the ride of her understanding what that is. So I see, I, I see why you probably prefer in, in your in your point of view, because you're like, I get it. Yeah. But I guess for people, maybe they just want to figure out why he decided to go that way of Zack Snyder of doing that. So, well, and I, and I was thinking at least it made Batman feel like more of a detective in the in the weeding cut than he does in okay. this one. And this in the Zack Snyder cut, I think he just you can tell that he's just not necessarily more of a detective, but he is just guilt driven by him thinking that he killed that he was part of Superman's death. Which you also felt in Whedon's cut, but I felt that he was trying to find out more in Whedon's cut mm-hmm. versus uh, this is a Snyder's cut. I would say when it came to telling the story, I think it was just better off talking about it at the Batcave. I have no reason why you need to go on a walk to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, to be honest gotcha. with you, because like they only did that so Cyborg can be can kind of be creeping around the place, but it's like. I think Cyborg's smart enough that he could have like hacked cameras at the back cave or something. I don't know. He could have done they could have been a little bit more clever with on the Zack Snyder code how Cyborg can eavesdrop or something like that. I, I mean mm-hmm. Wheaton, sorry, Wheaton could have done that and be more clever for yeah. it. But the whole because he filmed that walking scene and I'm like, eh, you could have Cyborg be somewhere nearby or something. I don't know. Or eavesdrop the conversation. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, like like I said, Cyborg in this in DC's uh, DC's world is like Vision and you know Iron Man put together. Like yeah. he's supposed to be able to have he's supposed to be able to be completely unstoppable. Yet he is also superhuman in his own, superhuman in his own right. So it is kind of an interesting mix. I don't know. I just even I don't know. I just don't connect. I I just don't like his character. Okay. I don't. It's not that I don't like his the actor. I think the actor did fine. I just, just, I don't know something about Cyborg doesn't interest me. Maybe it's the half man half mech thing. I don't know. You never been a mech machine person in general, anyways. So. Yeah, yeah, it's weird, right? Because I, I, I never have been. But I mean, I'm, I'm fine with RoboCop. I'm just not fine with Cyborg, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But you know, so. Yeah. Basically, they go through all this and they get into the main fight, and then they're the first fight. The first fight where they try to stop Steppenwolf from uh, Steppenwolf and the dad, or, or rescue Cyborg's dad and all that stuff. This is this is there's a scene in here that I wanted to to, to touch on with you is is that um, what I talked about in the last one where there was a heart to heart that Batman had with the Flash in this one. In the scene before they went and did their business in it. Now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. I'm trying to think. Was the Aquaman before that? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was the Aquaman. There was the Aquaman. There's the Aquaman scene where so Batman recruits Batman recruits uh, Flash. Is trying to recruit Flash. That's when you get the little Flash throne thing, which is basically the same thing that you see in the Justice League version of it. Yeah, or the Zack Snyder's version of it. He dodges. He dodges like <laughs> he dodges in slow motion. Though this is really kind of the first time you see him do it in slow motion. So mm. a little Which bit that different, made it more meaningful. Okay. Huh? That yeah, made it, it more meaningful. It was more meaningful. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent So this is the first time you actually see him kind of do his speed move. So that made more sense and was more meaningful to me too as well. And then, of course, Wonder Woman is trying to recruit Cyborg, which is more or less the same conversation, too, as well. 
and then Aquaman saves people from the boat. The next, there's the whole Aquaman Stephen Wolf fight um, underneath. Uh, underneath. So, I mean, what do you have to say about any of that? So, um, it's interesting that Willem Dafoe is not in this movie, in this cut. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, and the question is, did he need to be in it? I mean, he was there to tell the story about, you know, taking the, the throne. Which, to yeah. me personally, I don't know why they just didn't give it to what's her face for more dialogue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like Amanda Heard, yeah. Yeah, like, give all those lines to William Defoe's character. Because at the end, she's the one that kind of turns him around. So she's the one yeah. she's been, like, bat- battering him. They're like, hey, you need to come re- be- take the throne. Hey, you need to come back and take the throne. Then he goes into the talk about, well, my mother never, my mother didn't want want me anyway. So your mother, yada, 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 yada. I think that would have been better. Because she was, honestly, she was only in, like, one scene. And it's like, bye. It's like, now do you need to be a part of it too? I don't, I don't know, man. Both of them didn't, yeah. both of them, both of them, it didn't work out for her. Um, But, um. It is what it is. Water fights are tough. Um, and by the looks of it, Stephen Wolf, it made Stephen Wolf look like it was a cakewalk. It, he didn't even have to try to me. He just, because the team, the uh, the whole Atlanteans were not even like really interesting. I don't know, man. I, I That fight was boring. It is what it is. Yeah, I kind of let that one go to myself. Yeah. I kind of let that one go to myself. I, I mean, obviously I was trying to gloss over it. So, I mean. Yeah. Um. The, it, you brought up a good point, though. The fact that William Defoe wasn't in this movie in the Whedon cut, um, it brings more backstory to Aquaman. But you have an entire movie that's going to be about Aquaman. So, like, I, I wonder if, it, like, like what you said, whether it really mattered or not. If you couldn't have given Amanda Heard her, her his lines and just kind of been like, okay, um, or if you, even if you could have cut down the the William Defoe scene a little bit in the Snyder cut. Right. Mm-hmm. But like, I think it was just more backstory to Aquaman, whether you can take it or you leave it. Does it really matter all that much? Cause you know that there's something about, like, I think watching this movie in general, you already knew that there was something that was keeping Aquaman from wanting to take the throne. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's some sort of mystery that you need that you're you're trying to do with Aquaman some more so that you're trying to sell the fact that he can have his own movie. I mean, I like I question you, does uh does Antaraj do, do a better job of making you want to watch an Aquaman <laughs> movie than this movie? <laughs> yeah. Weirdly enough, the the TV show Antaraj, yeah, yeah. I think it's just it's so sad that this was not the Aquaman I st- this Aquaman did still not convince me I like Aquaman. Because uh, I was never Aquaman. I think he was just a boring character. Um, and in the Zack Snyder Cut original one, I mean, I thought he was just a character that's just, just there. And not even Josh Whedon could s- do anything with that. So right there is like, Aquaman is just there to fill out the numbers, man. Because he's just there. Like, I, I, I just was not feeling Aquaman whatsoever. And it's not, it's not the actor's fault or nothing. It's just the way they wrote him. He's just not interesting. Yeah, I think how you felt about Aquaman is how I feel about Cyborg. <laughs> it's, it's just a sad deal. But that's the sad part, right? Because Aquaman got more roles, in, a bigger role in this movie than Cyborg. In, in and this yet, one, than Cyborg and, did, And yeah. yet, I connect, I would connect, I, I like Cyborg more. Because at least he's more, at least he had some connection. More effort. Aquaman yeah. was just kind of there for the ride. He's like, I'm here because I got my butt kicked and I want to see how this goes with a group now. But, yeah, he's like, I'm a loner. Right. By the way, I'm useless if we're not anywhere near water. <laughs> you know, I'm just here for the ride, guys. So it's it's he 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 cracks he he does that he does he does do the J like the Justice League Unlimited uh, jokes about <laughs> about the whole uh, fish in the water and all that stuff it's, throughout the movie. I'll give that you that. worked out well. I'll give you that. But it's a that character. Well. Yeah, as a, as an overall character, he's like just there. Yeah, I don't know. It, it like like what you said. It's not Jason Momoa's fault because I don't think it's his fault. I think he did fine. Just like the person that plays Cyborg, I think he did just fine too as well playing Cyborg. I just something about those characters I didn't care for so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, there they had scenes. There were scenes in the movie that I liked of them, but overall, I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. So your Flash Boy. 
we're going to talk about Flash. We're going to talk about okay. Flash. Um, so he has the heart to heart with Batman, man. At the very beginning, he's just like, so you know, I just kind of go places. I don't. I kind of just like push people every so often, but I don't like you know fight. What? It's like I I I don't know, I don't know what to do. And then Batman's just like, save one person. Yeah. It's like what what? <laughs> it's like just save one person. It's like. Then, then then what it's like right. you'll know what to do next it's like, okay. yeah so that answers your question on the whole um he doesn't punch i know that, why was that, that not you? <laughs> i don't know why that was not in in, in the zack snyder cut like that makes so much more sense and i'm glad that josh we noticed that and he put it in there that was a big plus for me and right there is yeah. like i like the flash more now in this movie because i get it i get why he doesn't do it his lines are a lot better in this one Flash got a, l- a better touch up than the Zack Snyder cut. So, you know what I mean? I feel like his lines, he was funnier in this one, though his yes. lines were like similar, but it just, I think the comic, the comic, I like, I think they, they were like, all right, so you're the comic relief. You're a goofy yet really fast superhero. We're just going to go with it. Like, I felt like it works so much better in this movie that they were like, they accepted his role. And just went with it versus yes. where they tried to play too many too many shades of Flash in in the Zack Snyder's just as a- yeah because I like the fact that he used you got to see some fast speed and then some of the additional scenes that he had brought a little bit more of his personality out because in the Zack Snyder I just feel like that he's funny but you are a background to me like you're there when you're when we need you. You know, I, I, I and I and I can say you can say it's the same thing with Wheaton here, but it, at least you can tell that Flash is trying a little bit harder in the Wee one where he's trying to try his best to be part of this team. Yeah. You know, instead so, of his ex starter cut is like, Oh, oh, I'm in this movie. Oh hey, what you need, guys? What what, 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 you, need? what you need? You know? So a- So maybe I, maybe it'll work maybe this is the way it's put. I think this is how I feel. So I, so maybe if I say it, it might work out for you too. So maybe in Zack Snyder's cut, I think overall with the characters, they do more. But I think with the weeding cut, he pays it like there's more attention to detail with the each individual character. Okay. Like just what they say, what they do. Yeah. Like I, I think the chemistry felt. I felt more chemistry in the Weeding cut, but they did more in the Snyder cut. No, I'll give you that because I would say the Wonder Woman and Batman relationship definitely shows out more in the Weeding cut than the Jack yeah. Snyder. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I agree. I think so too, and I, I think that you know there is like you got more story out of the Snyder cut, but you got like the more detailed interactions as far as like the no, like the attention to detail. Yeah. And that's like I just mentioned on the in the in the, about what I feel like Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder has great cinematography. He's just mm-hmm. he he is flashy, but he's hollow. Like you can he has he when it comes to cinematography, it looks pretty, it looks beautiful and everything. But when it comes down to details, your character development and everything, it's just like it's it's too it's, broad. It's yeah, too yeah, overall. yeah. And you could argue that the Zack Snyder one, yes. Yes, um, the 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 um the Zack Snyder cut shows more of these characters. Yes, and then my question I come to them, come to you is, th- do you need four? Can, how come it has to take you four hours to do that? Why does it take you four hours to get these characters to develop? Do yeah. you got to do, you got to do better on the writing? So so the funny thing is that we got four hours of the Zack Snyder cut. And he flushes out whatever. And then we get two hours of the Josh Whedon cut. And he flushes out a random Russian family in the middle of nowhere. Loved it. It made so really? much sense. All right. It made Tell me so why. much sense. Because in the Zack Snyder cut, I was always confused of here's Steppenwolf taking over this power plant in Russia. Why is no one noticing this? Why is no one saying anything? Is the town abandoned? Like, you're not showing me anything. At least showing the couple that they notice, it shows them acknowledge, like, oh, okay, do I want to spend the whole time? Like, no, I don't even care. You can show that's one scene of this family, and that's it. For I'm good for it. But at least someone acknowledging to me, is this town just empty? Is it run down? Or there's people there, and, and are they scared? And what are they doing? That 
that would have helped me so much if if Snyder put that in the, in his cut of just people acknowledging of Steppenwolf doing yeah. this power play. And it's so noticeable with this giant shield over everything like that. Yeah. It made so much sense to me. It's like the Simpsons, you know? You're coming up on nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I just felt like I'm glad we need kind of acknowledge like, well, thank you for letting me know that he's just not taking, he's taking over this town and letting me it's, know if it's it, abandoned or not. So it's weird, right? Because this is the overall versus the detail that we kind of talked about. Cause I'm going to say Zack Snyder does a better job of letting us know that there is more effect to the cities and the people in the cities than Whedon does. Mm-hmm. But Whedon actually details the fact that we actually see a family because the reason why Batman went after Superman was because of the fight that Superman had that destroyed half the half the half the city, right? Yes. That he lost somebody in the he lost somebody in one of Wayne Enterprises' buildings, and that's why he's coming after Superman. But you just you just know that there's all those aftershocks and after, like the after effects that you know just that happened because of this fight. Versus here in Whedon's cut you see more directly how it have, can affect one particular family. You may not see a lot, but you see some struggles to the one. I find it, I found this one kind of weird that the one random family in there, mm-hmm. like you wanted to see a little bit more. I, I think, I think there could have been more of an effect on all, all of, all of the people in that area. But I see your point and I, I do agree with your point. I think there is, I think he did do a good job of actually showing how it does kind of affect a family, at least a mm-hmm. family, versus like the overall aspect of like how Snyder would be like, well, this affects people. You know, through the characters I give you, that it's going to affect people. Right, because out of both movies, even I, even that just Josh Wheaton, even though he showed the family stuff, no one in the Justice League when they went to, to Steppenwolf's base, no one ever acknowledged, are there people here? Yeah. Like, no, we're gonna go in and take over this. Like, well, is there civilians? Like, yeah. what do we know? What's the information? They just like, let's just go for it. And that kind of feels a little out of place for the Justice League. I would think they would do a little bit more, at least with Cyborg, this, he can yeah. kind of use some, something to scan the place to me to show, like, is there anybody around before we tear up? Yeah, I mean, especially with Cyborg being as, as, as advanced as he is, she should be able to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But Josh Wheaton didn't acknowledge that either, so he doesn't get a pass either. But at least... Yeah, no, at least but at least he showed people, I guess. But I feel like both sides both sucked at not letting the uh, the heroes acknowledge, like, well, is this an empty place? What's the story about this place? So, yeah. All right, before we get into really the big intro of Superman, because that's, that, is the, uh, that, is, that is something that we'll definitely talk about. The buildup to get into that intro of Superman were two completely build, different buildups which was, I found kind of weird and yet worked for both both movies. Zack Snyder's cut, the introduction of bringing Superman back, basically came into the tales of them getting their butt kicked in the Zack Snyder cut. Then they were like, they went into the whole entire story of Cyborg and uh, how, he, how he used the mother box to become who he became, which was funny because... Um, you know, I, th- I think Jeremy and I should definitely do a skit there. Um, you know, where he's just like, well, it's a long story. We-, we got four hours of movie to talk about here, man. I need you just to tell me the story, man. Why, why-, why are we even talking about this? Man? Right, just tell me the right. Part. And then instead, uh, you know, in the Whedon cut, you know, you kind of get a conversation of about the box being able to bring life back. But the difference is, is that there is a scene before they bring Superman back where they have a conversation about the pros and the cons of bringing Superman back. I really like the Wheaton that did that. I really like he did that. Because that's where Flash started shining a little bit. He started he started running around the room, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I like that. And he's like, get out of get out of the car. Get get out of my car. You know? That right there to me was like, yeah, he wanted Flash to shine a little bit more in this movie. Yeah. And like the Snyder cut, he just stand there and just waited for it. It felt like waiting for his line on a script. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, go on. 
No, and I, I completely agree with you. The The one thing I will say, though, is I, I understand both views. I actually like Whedon's cut on this one because I think it makes sense that if you're going to use an alien technology to bring back Superman, you don't know the consequences, the pros and the cons. Like, I think you have to have that conversation. And I think Wonder Woman having that conversation with Batman about about the pros and cons of bringing Superman back and the fact that he, that she's like, don't blame yourself. Quit, quit feeling, feeling so guilty about you feeling like you killed Superman is the reason why you want to just jump into this. This isn't you. Like, like I feel like that made sense to me because it's like, I, why not have that conversation where it's like, can you stop Batman or can you stop Superman if he comes back and he's evil? Like you get that conversation in Snyder's cut, sort of with uh, with Alfred, which whether or not you really like, is it Jeremy Irons? I think is Alfred. Jeremy Irons, yes, yeah, Alfred. I don't how you feel about Jeremy Irons being Alfred. Um, I think that's I think that He's part is uh, up to you, the viewer, and I think that will actually change how you f- view that point of view. But I think. The Justice League having that conversation with Batman and going, it's like, you know, if we bring up Superman, you know, we don't know if he's going to be the bad Superman or whatever. We don't know what's going to happen, you know? Yeah, because and, in, the, in the Zack Snyder one, and correct me if I'm wrong here, they just kind of went with Batman's decision. Like, we need him. We need yeah, to bring him back. Well, yeah, because they got their butt kicked so bad. And then next, they had that conversation with... Uh, Cyborg has the conversation and lets him know that he was brought back to life because of the, because yeah. of the mother box. And then Flash is all like, we're all thinking it. I don't want to say it, but I know we're all thinking it. Then it's, you know, Cyborg does that cool little hologram yeah. of Superman coming up. And then all of a sudden, that's it. That's where we go. Yeah. We're in this. Yeah. So. And, I, and, I, and, I, I, and that was not believable until I saw the Whedon cut. I mean, Whedon's version of like, yes, why are we not have an argument about this? Like, I as a viewer, sh- it's going to be thinking in that too. Instead of like, why would. Why do I automatically want Superman to come back? Like, we don't know what's going to happen. And I'm glad that Wonder Woman... This made Wonder Woman stand out more to me in the weed mm-hmm. cut. Regardless of the situation, she stood up a little bit more instead of just letting Batman make the call. Because Batman was tr- trying to be the leader. And I like how Batman was trying to force Diana to be a leader. Like, you're the leader. Which I don't see that in the Snyder Cut of Batman trying to force Wonder Woman to be a leader. And I like the fact that they're going there so much that... He brought up a pass of hers, and she got pissed for a second. I like that. Yeah. I was like, good, there's conflict between these people. Instead of like, we're just going to go for the ride and do it. So, I, yeah, I, I like that scene way better in that aspect. Yeah, I do too. And Jeremy Irons just I, there to be there. <laughs> it, you know, Jeremy Irons is uh, Alfred. I just, something about it didn't connect with me. I don't know why. Well, they don't do nothing with him. He he's just there to be there. If he had a bigger role or something, I, mean, I think you had a different outlook. But he's just there to be there. Yeah, you know that's fair. Like if there was a standalone movie with a uh, Batman standalone movie with Ben Affleck and him, I, like I wonder if yeah. I would feel differently. But I I just there's something about it that doesn't that doesn't work compared to like the Michael Caine or the the old Alfred of uh, like the Michael Keaton. I would agree, but I would argue that if we replace Ben Affleck with Christian Bell and then Michael Caine for this, I feel the same way. I would say like, well, Michael Caine was just there. He would. I don't think he would go into a giant story. I don't think in the, in this cut. Not with those two. Was, not those two in the driver's seat. Whedon and Snyder. You know, but there's something about there's something about like Michael Caine's performance, and that maybe that's the way they wrote Alfred. Like, there's something about Alfred that. I think of as a very kind of like calm intellectual like person. And I just didn't feel it in, in the justice league movies. Yeah. They just didn't give him enough time. I mean, really think about it. Like he only really has like, he has less than 10 scenes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. So hopefully, so so that's why I wish, you know, if they did a Batman movie, I bet we would have got a, a, Jeremy Irons would have had a bigger shine. So. Yeah, because I, I like Jeremy Irons as a, as an actor. I just I was just kind of curious. Something about it just didn't resonate with me for some reason. So I just wanted to point it and out. And let me ask you this: If it wasn't Jeremy Irons and you put anybody else to put as Alfred, I would you would it be the same regardless to you? 
Like I wonder not- because I think it, I think it's the I think it's the lines that they had to put out in the next. Like I like I said, I think it's the way it was written. Okay, they felt like Alfred was more. I wouldn't say panicky, but it kind of felt like he was panicky. <laughs> Yeah. He wasn't as like that old, older, wise, calm-headed like Alfred that we normally always get from Alfred. Yeah, but I think at the same time, though, Michael Caine has never met any other heroes. He only knows Batman. So I feel like it makes sense for Jeremy Allen to be kind of freaked out. It's like, what is a robot, a water person <laughs> doing here? And a guy that runs fast? Like, he was cool with Diana. He's like, oh, she's cool. She's she's a cool chick. Yeah, because he want he wants Batman to hook up with her. Which, yeah, 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 yeah. So right there, but I, I would want to hook up with her too. But, but I, I mean, think I, I I think the panicky makes sense. He's like, who who are these people? No, you know? no. And so no, I, I get what you're saying there. Yeah. So, so yeah, the difference between the two, and then of course we get Superman. Man, you get Superman. It wasn't as long of a cut in this in the Whedon's cut and then the Snyder cut. But how'd you feel? Uh, how'd you feel about the first the first edition of Superman? Snyder uh, cuts was yeah. better. Snyder cuts was better. Uh, it just showed out a little bit more. It gave it gave Batman more of. I mean, it gave Superman more of a shine. The only thing that I would want to keep it is Batman's reaction after Superman got him. Do you bleed? And he's like, Yeah, I'm bleeding. I bleed it. Yeah. <laughs> I I like that part of, of Batman. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, yeah. And I, I like that. Um, but overall, we that was too quick. He should have he should have let that marinate. He should have just let it all hang out. Like let Superman have his giant shine. Like let him go off because cutting off Aqua, uh, Aquaman and Flash is coming back from the second round. I wanted that back in there, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I I feel like out of all the cuts, that one. You, you could have stretched that one out. Like, I would have rolled with two hours and ten minutes if we can get that scene back in there. <laughs> a little bit a little bit more of that yeah. Superman scene. Yeah. I, I would say, though, I agree with Zack Snyder on this one. Like, the whole the whole scene is like, do you bleed? Makes no sense. So I'm yeah. glad that part was... I'm glad... I, I, I'm not glad that part wasn't cut out. But they could have cut that out and added more, more of the scenes. In this one, it felt like it was more of... This one, I felt like... Alfred shined a little bit more of grabbing Lois Lane, and I don't know if it was necessarily a move that because in both both editions, you don't know if it was because Ben Affleck, uh, Bruce Wayne actually made Alfred do that. Because in the Snyder cut, it was more it was more Marshall Manhunter starting that motion. And in this one, it felt like it was more like Alfred, Alfred and uh, Bruce Wayne did something maybe behind the scenes that we didn't see or hear to get Lois into the scene. Mm-hmm. And I think I like that part better is that Martian Manhunter wasn't involved at all because I I really don't think Martian Manhunter really or, did anything. Or they just kept him well hidden. Now that Zack Snyder yeah. cut, you know, he's in the movie, but he never revealed himself. <laughs> oh, you're talking about uh, the weeding cut? Yeah. Yeah. So he, maybe he was in it, but we just don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe he was Alfred the entire time. We just. Ah! <laughs> I honestly, uh, no, I honestly believe, weirdly enough, that he is Martha when he went to go vo- visit Lois Lane in that newsroom. Uh, oh, in the newsroom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After seeing the Snyder cut, I mean, yeah, the uh, Snyder cut, I believe that, like, that could still be Marshall, Marshall Manhunter. Right there. Uh, it's it's a possible, yeah. I can I can see that being a possibility. Yeah. I don't know why, but I felt Wonder Woman, one Wonder Woman's fight in this one was. I mean, I mean, it was the same, but it meant more. <laughs> it felt uh, like you it mean just more. overall her performance fights in the, the whole movie, or just with Superman? No, uh, just this part in Superman. I think overall I how think it was he, exactly how the same. Did, huh? I don't think. Yeah, I was gonna say it feels like it was about the same, but I don't know. I I guess there was. Maybe there was less of it, so I was like, "Okay." I was like, "It wasn't overexposing, but they weren't underexposing either." Mm-hmm. I will say this, sadly enough, Aquaman. That's all I have to say. Like <laughs> one scene, and like he was done. Like where where'd Aquaman do this whole the rest of this? Like he got cut and Flash. Flash had a bigger moment, but the slow motion he got knowledge, so he got his moment. But Aquaman. He just charged. Never saw him again. Like, 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 like. That was terrible. That sucks. Like, yeah. that's how much Aquaman got cut from that scene. 
Yeah, he got cut a lot. Yeah. I would say, I would say though, this, what was Flash trying to do? Trying to push Superman? <laughs> right. Right. I don't know, man. <laughs> I looked at him and I was just like, what are you trying to do? Push Superman? It's like, what, what was that all about, dude? That would have been awesome if he got a moment. Both of them. Both of them in both movies. If that was his moment to punch and just see what happens. Yeah. That would have been awesome. And then he just looks at him like, yeah, that's not going to work. But at least he tried. So. Yeah, at least he tried something, right? Yeah. So let's let's talk about Aquaman here. So <laughs> be, between guy. the two cuts, I, I there was one noticeable cut that was different about this movie than the other movie, and that was Aquaman's uh, cut where Wonder Woman has the rope around his ankle, but he doesn't know, and he just goes into the. That hole. was funny. <laughs> that that was funny. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was funny. He needed something. That was hilarious. He needed something. Yeah, I I agree. I think that I think maybe maybe we were both just accustomed to all the the these or the uh, the the Marvel movies, but I think that needed some humanity with Aquaman that worked out well because it was just kind of like you know I'm just a loner. I just you know I don't want to die by myself, so I kind of joined the league and just <laughs> it, it, at least at least it shows about more of his personality instead of Snyder. Yeah. He was just there to be there. Never really expressed himself, and that right there. See, that that was his flash moment. You know what I yeah. mean? So, like, yeah. kudos to Whedon to add those scenes to make them shine in that way. So, yeah, like the the little the little tidbits, like those are like so like the little epi- little details that we talked about, where like it, it just it works for those characters, and I think Jason Momoa just nailed it, like nailed that scene, mm-hmm. and uh, as. You know, some people might be like, well, that was the dumbest scene. It's like, well, you know what? Wonder Woman being able to use the rope on an actual, an actual Justice League member, like, finally. Because we know we know Flash wasn't going to put this front up because he was pretty much who he was. He was out in the open. He's going to let you know what he was. I mean, in fact, he's just like, this is the Bat Cave, you know? Yeah, and Superman and just, wasn't going to do anything either. I mean, it, he, <laughs> he didn't know where he was, so it didn't work for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you weren't going to catch Superman. And so, I mean, if you're going to do it on anybody to, to get that tough house, uh, tough ex- exterior out of the way, you do it to, to Aquaman and you have fun with it, you know, and, and it works out just fine. Mm-hmm. And you can read Batman's face, so you already kind of knew what he was going through. So yeah, have fun with it. And I think they did have fun with it, too. So mm-hmm. I really did like that scene, that addition to that scene, too. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about the final battle. Okay, final battle. Let's do this. The final battle. It's the final countdown. Stop doing that. Every time you do it, then the then that giant flashback. I mean, your background goes into this giant flash. Anyways, go on. Oh, nice. <laughs> good timing. Good timing. Yes. Um, so now we go into the final the final battle, which is two completely different uh, finals. Two completely different finals. Jeremy, how did you feel about the final battles? Okay, so if I had to choose which one is better to me between the Zack Snyder and the in the Wheaton, the Wheaton one was better to me. Really? Why? Because every it felt everybody had a better purpose. Um, okay. So, for instance, um, Superman coming a little bit later. And doing other stuff made it more shine. I mean, it makes it much better. Here's the thing about it. When Superman came in the Zack Snyder cut, it was basically over. You kind of just sit back like, okay, Superman's just going to do the job. It's over. Bye. At least in this move, in this one. One, it makes sense Superman not wearing the black outfit because it didn't make sense in the first place. He wasn't going to be evil. So keep him with the red and blue. I like that. That came out a little bit better for him. Um, the other thing too was just the fact that Superman acknowledged that there were still people around and he went to go do with that, trusting the Justice League to still fight. And that gave them more of a shine for a moment before Superman finished the last blow. Or plus also do he helped out. He he helped out instead of just beating the crap out of him and then winning like that, he kind of made the Justice League shine a little bit more because he knew he could whoop everybody, but he let them shine a little more. I love the fact that Flash went to go try to help that family and then Superman... And Flash had this co- competition like, hey, you go this way, I go this way. And they go help the people while they, the Justice League saved that. Because that made it more, I don't know, it just felt more bonding. 
everybody got it. That to me, to everybody in that group, like I get it. I know, my, I know my job. Instead of going in there, because Flash just runs around in the Zack Snyder one until Victor, until um, um, Cyborg needed him, and I'm like, once again, Flash is just there to be there. He's not shining. The Wii one, he shines a little bit more in this one, and and um. And Wonder Woman shines a little bit more in this one. Batman shines a little bit more in this one to me. Um, and then Superman adds a better moment to me in this one. But in the Zack Snyder one, it just... I don't know. It just... It didn't feel like they were bonding. It just felt like they were just kind of there and hope for the best. Also, too, I feel like Steppenwolf got a better moment, too. That's just how I felt about it. So Gotcha. Um, so... It, this one's this one's an interesting one too. Whether I like the weeding cut versus the Snyder cut on this one, because both of them had their had their goods and their bads. I I didn't like how Steppenwolf died per se in the weeding cut so much, being attacked by uh, his own minions more or less. I will agree with that. And then going off up to off, off to nowhere. I did like the fact that Superman and Flash went to save people because it makes sense to me that Superman is the guy that will be more caring about everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, because he can with the super hearing. I know it I know it breaks and just breaks the monotony and just breaks in the middle of the actual scene. Cause it just kinda kinda sort of came out of nowhere. Cause he comes in and he stops Steppenwolf and just kind of beats down Steppenwolf. I felt in the Snyder cut that that Superman meant more as far as like butt kicking and whatnot is concerned because he comes in and he just whoops some tail in uh, the Snyder cut. But in the Whedon cut, he actually gets beat up a little bit, which I kind of like because, I mean, he did just come back from, you know, being dead. So I... I, you would think there's a little bit of rust on him, right? So I was okay with that. Okay with him just getting kind of getting beaten up. And I do 110% agree with you. I felt that the Whedon cut, there was more synergy amongst all the the the, um, the Justice League members than I did in the Snyder cut. Because in the Snyder cut, the only real synergetic part of the movie that I that I thought was when they killed they killed Steppenwolf more or less mm-hmm. like they did all their combo moves to kill Steppenwolf and I know they teamed up with each other saving Batman and whatnot um, whenever Batman was driving to his death more or less and some other scenes too as well but I felt I felt like there was more chemistry amongst them in the Whedon cut that they were working together to actually overcome what was going on let me ask you let me ask you this do you feel like with the Whedon cut Steppenwolf got a better standoff than the Zack Snyder cut. Oh, you mean standoff as, as far as fighting and everything? Yeah, yeah. because I feel like I with Superman not coming and destroy everything, at least Steppenwolf gets a moment of shine before he gets defeated instead of yeah. like Steppenwolf just comes, I mean, Superman just comes and beats him and is over. And it's like, like he doesn't get that last hurrah or even like a, a bit of a chance. Like he's a, one of the most powerful people and you're telling me like, he can't get at least a hit in to make Superman at least feel a little like, ooh, didn't know yeah. you uh didn't know you hit that hard. Mm, I'll have to remember that. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm exactly. going to beat you, but like mm, kind of took a little bit. You, know, you didn't get that, you know. So yeah, yeah. no, I I, I I I agree with you there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know, it's it's a little bit. I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of torn between the two. I'm still trying to, th- I'm still trying to work it out in my mind whether I liked one versus the other better. Um, there you, are parts of both of them that you know that you can like and dislike. If you wanted the battle to feel longer and maybe feel more rewarding, Z- Snyder Cut will give it to you. But if you want to see a better, like I to me, a better teamwork kind of set, the Wii and Cut does the good, better job yeah. than that. So. Yeah, and if you if you're really wanting to see Flash be, if you want to have that Flash and and Cyborg meant more to the ending of the movie, then the Snyder cut mm-hmm. was the one to go with. If that was what you were looking for, and Superman and bringing back Superman to life, like all three of those, I think the Snyder cut uh, 
was more of your taste because I think with Superman in the Whedon cut, we brought back Superman to kind of even the odds is what it mm. felt like is like to make it work, to make, to make our level, like we were here or we or like Stephen was here and we were here mm. and then Superman like got us there, if not a little bit above. And it showed that there was a, a fair fight per se, even though it was like a five on one fight, mm. but a fair fight. Whereas once we got Superman, it was kind of like Captain Marvel for for uh, DC or for Mar or for Marvel. Yeah, it was kind of like the end game, right? Yeah. So between the two, I mean, you can bounce between the two. Then it's of course Superman and Flash saving the civilians. Which the only complaint I really have about that is is like you know if they're moving people at the speed of light, you know they they're gonna have whiplash and they're gonna break their neck, man. I'm, t- I'm just saying, like Flash pushing that car, man. That little kid would have flown off that car so fast. Yeah, we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it would have been better. The next, of course, the Stephen 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 Wolf's defeat was better in the Justice League Zack Snyder cut, in my opinion. Yeah, because Which, I will say, if Dead if uh, Dark Side did not get revealed at all until the very end of that Zack Snyder movie, that would have been rewarding. Yeah, because right there he could have introduced himself. They could have said, hey, yeah. who are you? And you said, you'll find out soon. And then that would have been awesome. So Yeah, absolutely. All right. And next, of course, you know, uh, before we get to our, our actual final thoughts and comparisons, the movie ends, Lois ends this movie with a basically kind of like a monologue collage of everything that's going on. And then we end the movie next. We go to the after credits, which was actually different. One to of the them, point yeah. Was different. Yeah. Yeah, one of them, which was different to a point that it kind of made more sense to me. But so in this one, he, you, Luther just kind of he he escapes. He escapes Arkham. He brings in dead sh- or dead uh, or. He brings in yeah. what's his name? Yeah, Deathstroke. Yeah, he brings in Deathstroke. Then he teases the line of, since they got a league, um, since they got a league, we should come up with our own league. Whereas in the Snyder cut, he basically ousts who Brett Batman is more or less, mm-hmm. and then Martian Manhunter and whatnot in the Snyder cut too. But just the ending Lex Luthor scene. Do you feel like it worked better in this movie? Yeah, um, it worked better in this movie because the idea of we're going to create a new team would be a cooler setup instead of trying to spin it off as a Batman movie. Yeah, because I think I'd be fine without a Batman movie. I would if they decided to kind of continue on with the Justice League and it could be a Batman story focus or something. I don't know. Yeah. It, that, I, I think so too. I, I think Whedon's cut with just that particular thing is that it feels like there is a more overall kind of like feel on what they're going to try to do. Like maybe we get the Injustice League in the second movie and we get Dark Side in the third movie. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the Zack Snyder cut, it felt like we were going, it, like it was just trying to set up like the other movie in the world in this universe, and then we're gonna get Justice League with uh, Dark Side as the main villain. Mm-hmm. So I felt that it worked and worked in, the, and we're not even gonna talk about the the Joker scene that happened in the Snyder cut. Mm-hmm. Um, but like for this particular view and his particular vision, I think it worked. Um, I like the lines better in this one. I, I don't really like the fact that Lex to oust, ousted a uh, Bruce Wayne to Deathstroke in the Snyder cut, because to me, I don't know where it fits in that realm of realms, you know? Yeah. And then it doesn't help that he's in the, in the post, like in the future, like in a post apocalyptic world working together. And you're like, yeah, "Mm, what? So, yeah. So that's all I wanted to touch up on. That's basically the movie. Um, Um, Instead, one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think about the little fun little thing at the end with the race? Oh, I liked it. Okay. 
the the pre the pre credits the yeah. pre credits to the post credits yeah um yeah the the superman the superman flash race i actually liked it because i mean that means that that goes to show that um it's it's a very marvel thing to do which is why which is why i think a lot of dc fans may not like it mm-hmm. but i think it it's a nice thing to do to kind of show superman's like interactions with the flash and the fact that these guys are slowly becoming a team yeah and are gonna have fun as a team right yeah oh sorry one last thing too i don't mind the black suit i don't know the black suit story as well as a lot of other people will be able to tell me but i didn't mind the black suit suit in snyder's cut or versus this cut so okay whatever on that but i did like the flash cut the flash scene at the end with the race okay I like that card, like the the back and forth that they had, because you know, even during the time when they were saving the, the civilians, where he's just like, Superman is just like slow poke. Yeah, because you know, it's interesting between their relationship is in the Snyder cut, the Flash kind of worships Superman. He talked yeah. about it in the movie. He's like, I wanted to be like him when I grow up, and all this stuff. But that kind of deletes his way in the West in the Wheaton cut. Is more of like he's for he's. He's more like he heard about him, but he doesn't know anything about it. He's not exciting until he sees Superman, you know, um, r- r- um, flying beside him while they were going to go save the civilians. That's where I Flash kind of shine more, and you know, for yeah. that moment for the relationship. So, or the friendship. So you, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's it. Sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, that was my fault. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe that was the setup. The setup with the Whedon thing at the very beginning, where he is having that conversation with the kids. Yeah. Because I, th- I think. I think in this movie there was there was enough hints in this movie that Flash kind of worshipped uh, Superman. It was like Superman's fan, and the fact that Superman is more likable in this actually he was more likable in both movies. <laughs> yeah, like both the Snyder cut and this one, they did a good job with Superman being likable because he was not likable in Batman vs Superman. Oh, and like, we know why. All. So at all, and that was all. That was all Snyder's fault on that yeah. one. So I think th- that recovery from Snyder was good. So the fact that you know he maybe Superman just knows that this dude like Superman. The good thing about it is, is that it tells me that Superman knows what he is and how he can kind of have fun and then you know joke with the with the people and still kind of like you know have fun with the kids, right? Yeah. Um, and still have fun with uh, the Flash and just being like, you know, I'm I'm just a person like you are, except for I'm superhuman and could do all this stuff too. So maybe that was a way of just setting it up, like you know, where like they had him with the kids at the very beginning, where they were trying to give him some sort of personality, mm-hmm. and then his personality shined out a little bit more. So I, I liked it. I think it worked. Okay. Um, anything else you wanted to add that we didn't touch on? Um. I do want to talk about the filming between the two. We all we talked okay. about certain scenes, and one of the things definitely I would say is a minus is the the shade of of the color tones. So Snyder cut, you can tell that it's a little bit darker, a little more gritty. Um, Whedon's cut is a little bit brighter, more colorful. But the consequence for Whedon's stuff, particularly these scenes through the whole movie, is. The his high colorfulness made a lot of scenes look a lot fake. Like you could definitely tell there's a they're in the background. Uh, you could definitely tell this is more CG than it is. But at least the Snyder cut, it felt like it blended more with the environment. Whedon's felt like it was kind of it. Sometimes it almost felt like way out of place. And I'm not talking about the yeah. editing. I'm just talking about just certain scenes. It's like this doesn't fit here for some reason to me. I don't get yeah. that. So. So this is this is one of the things that I was talking to you about before is that I felt that you could tell the difference between the two, the weed and mm-hmm. and of course I had flipped it personally because I had thought you can tell the Snyder's one felt more comic booky. Yes. And then it's the Whedon's cut, uh the Whedon's version, you can just kind of felt I don't know, felt weird. He was it was almost like he was trying to turn that movie to a, an Avenger style film. But with yeah. Justice League, that's why it's yeah. like super colorful, super a little bit more comic, like comic flashy kind of 
thing. I don't I like a colorful like a colorful comic. Like, yeah. Versus like like the dark comics that you see with uh, Yeah. And it makes sense because that's uh, Wheaton's good that's Wheaton's like style. Avengers yeah. showed you that. And you could definitely see here that's his style. He's not part he's not he's not a dark tone person, serious. He's more of like, let's have fun. This is a this is supposed to be heroes fighting, having fun. You know, Snyder's is more yeah. of like we're I want this to be serious. There's a lot of stuff on there are a lot of stuff on the line here, you know. So it's interesting yeah. to see their version of it. It makes me wonder in the future that'll never happen. What if Josh what, what if Josh Whedon got his full control of doing a continuation of, of the just Justice League movie? You know, yeah. what would this what would the sequel to the Justice League movie in his vision compare to what Zack Snyder was trying to do? And I already told you, I don't want to see Snyder's road. I'm off. Yeah. I'm jumping off that road, but I'm curious what Whedon would have done in his full control if he had the full control of all the heroes and how, what characters and what he would have done. How would he do Dark Side if he wanted to bring him in? I don't know. Yeah. So, it would be interesting. I, 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 I would be interested in seeing that too. I think. So the the thing about it is I agree with you. There is like the Whedon. Whedon is very Avenger Marvel style. Is the reason why people disliked it because they wanted the dark dingier version of like the DC. The problem with the dark dingy part thing about DC is that Christopher Nolan is the dude that did it the best. Like the dark, the dark realistic feel like Christopher Nolan is the one that did the DC movies the best when it comes to that. So it's hard. It's hard to hit it in a realm like for Zack Snyder's, like I feel like his can be too serious and too drabby and too dark. Yeah, the reason why I would say Christopher Nolan did the best only because he he was he's in control of a dark character. Unlike Justice yeah. League, Batman is the only dark one. You can't make yeah. everybody dark. So if Christopher Nolan did a Justice League, it wouldn't work. He couldn't do it like he did with Batman with a Justice League. He has to change it up because he's dealing with. A Superman. Superman can't be dark. He's the world's hope. You can't make one well, I mean, dark. Zack Snyder made him dark, right? <laughs> Say what? Zack Snyder made him dark. Yeah, but it didn't work for me. You know? Yeah, it, it didn't work. I mean, like, I, I think if he, I think if Nolan did it, though, because I think I think Superman would be more like the Inception world, that Inception style world. Yeah. Then it would be as in the Dark Knight world. Like I think you, could, I think Nolan would do a better job. You, you I'm could, just saying you could be right. I guess the overall story it wouldn't be yeah. that dark theme. I guess to think yeah. about it. He'd be good yeah, with characters, I, but he has to make yeah. you know because to me, I haven't seen him do very CG ish like that. He doesn't. I could tell he doesn't like using CG unless he has to in his movies. You know what I mean? Which is great. I love. No, yeah, I love that. but him in this movie, he has to bump up the CG. If you're dealing with aliens coming down, space stuff, that would have been interesting. The most CG he kind of did, kind of did, would might be Tenet and maybe Dunkirk, which I never seen. But even Dunkirk, they use real planes. But I know they had to use some CG for certain things. But him, this is an all green screen kind of thing. There's no way you can make it really too practical with this justice league per se oh yeah i wonder i'm kind of curious on that i mean but that's that's uh, that's the reason why i think the biggest complaint on a lot of people is is that they want they don't want to see that cookie cut marvel marvel style movie they wanted to see more of a dc thing right darker darker drabbier type of type of movie which i think which i think like what you said can in some senses work. I think the person that best did that style was Christopher Nolan. The only thing is I agree with you is, is that there's some things in this, in this DC world, you can't make dark and drabby and Superman being Wonder Woman, one of them, Wonder Woman being another of them, another one of them too, as well. In fact, I will, I'll argue that you can't really even make a Aquaman that way too, because I think Aquaman as a character I don't know, can be more colorful, but I don't know if the dark drabbiness works out for me. Yeah, and then my last tidbit that both people did, and I don't know why, I feel like that putting this, putting this, putting, okay, I'll just be straight up. It was pointless to put Green Lantern, a Green Lantern in this movie. Green Lantern should not even been in this movie. 
putting him just, in as a reference made no sense to me. It was pointless. Even showing that he was in the old war. I am the mindset, if you're going to put Green Lantern in, then put a Green Lantern in. But don't tease us with a Green Lantern, and then we're probably never going to see one again. And by the looks of it, in Snyder's Cut continuation, we never saw a Green Lantern again. I just feel like they just did it just to do it, and I'm like, I don't like that. Like, if you're going to put him in there, give us hope that a Green Lantern is coming. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> no, that's cool. I get you. Jeremy also a big Green Lantern guy, too, apparently. I, I just like characters that I feel like they're a better pick than what he picked. Like, you and I agreed that Green Lantern would have probably been a better choice than Cyborg in, in, in the Justice League. I feel like he deserves a chair better than Cyborg. But the only reason they put Cyborg in there, like we talked about before, he was just there to me personally as a main plot. He was just connected to the boxes. Other than that, he was really kind of – he just kind of just there. So – you know, I think I think Green Lantern instead of Aquaman would have worked out. Um, personally, just yeah. I think if you, because I think you and I both agree that we kind of like the side characters getting shines too, like characters that aren't really well known as well. Mm-hmm. But something about Cyborg, I said for me, didn't work out well. So I think if you were to replace the big three, which her, well, actually the big four. Which are Aquaman, uh, Aquaman, and those two. I think Aquaman can be replaced with a, uh, with Green Lantern in the next, you know, whatever reason you get Aquaman, you get Aquaman. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right. So typically at this point in time, we talk about questions. Uh, we we come up with our own questions. We didn't do that for the Justice League movies because it's, you know, six hours of movie we had to watch, and we really didn't want to talk about it. So we're just going to go through a list here, and Jeremy and I are just going to shoot back and forth. You know, who did it better? Who wore this war better? Okay. So, timelines, logic, and reasoning throughout this movie. So, the flow of the movie, and if it made sense to you, who did it better? Zack Snyder or Whedon? Okay. And we're not... there. And for the listeners, I we're not doing this inside of one person did the other. We're saying overall, right? Overall. Yeah. I pick Whedon. Just overall. All, all, I pick Whedon. Only because, sadly enough, it was the time. Mm-hmm. Two two hours was my golden number. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Four. It should not take four hours to tell this story. I'm I'm sorry. The story is simple. You just wanted he just wanted to build the characters a little more, and the characters just overstayed their welcome. I got bored with it. I will. I'm going to give Wheaton this one. I think he did. He did some. Whether you disagree or not, I think he was right of making this movie two hours. I think he was right. Um, my vote goes to Whedon on this one too, as well. I think, I think, um, his reasonings and some of the logic that he had with the characters and how they built that story from start to finish worked out though. I think Zack Snyder fleshed it out a lot better, but when you have four hours, I expect you to flesh it out a lot better. So Whedon to me makes, uh, gets this, gets this particular, uh, work on, gets this vote for me too, as well. Mm-hmm. We're going to go to specific characters now. Okay. Next overall, we'll talk about characters overall. So we're going to start with Batman. So who do you think wore it better on this one? Whedon. Whedon? Oh, mm-hmm. why so? Um, he got better. He got better uh, communication with the uh, with the other heroes. Hmm. I got I got Whedon on Batman too as well because uh, I felt that Whedon did a better job of fleshing out Batman a little bit more because I think Batman did more in this movie. It felt like he did more in this movie and he wasn't just a pawn. All right, Flash, Whedon. Okay, I don't need to explain. You know, I already said what I said about it. He just he gave him a little bit more detail, better, um, just because you expand more of his scenes of who he is doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything if if you're not giving details of his little personality of why the reason he's doing certain things so that's just me so i'm picking i'm picking wheaton yeah i got wheaton um i'm gonna go and i think this is gonna be a common for a common theme i think sometimes less is more and uh, what you do with the time that you have with the flash um worked out better in wheaton's cut than it did in in Mm -hmm. snyder's cut all right, Cyborg. Zack Snyder. At least, it, regardless if you don't like him or not, Zack did better of making him a character. 
So. Yeah, I'm going to go Zack Snyder's cut on this too as well. Um, I may not have been a fan of, of, of Cyborg. That's just that's a personal preference and not necessarily a, a, a just overall preference. Um, I hate the fact that, you know, uh, that in Whedon's cut, he said booyah at the very end. I was like, oh, really? yeah, that was kind of cringy. That was pretty cringy. It's like there's a lot of lines that uh, that uh, Cyborg says. I, I don't know if necessarily. No, he could have said touchdown for all I care. He could have said something. Else. I think I think he saw one of the episodes of Teen Titans, the cartoon. He's like, we're using that. <laughs> did he say did he say that in Teen Titans? He probably he he, he 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 had a lot of lines. He okay. had a lot of he had a lot of quick lines like I got the Sonic, you got the boom, you know those kind of stuff. Yeah, so see, he, you, you know I would have liked to have seen some more of that stuff like yeah. in, in this you in know in a weird way. Um, that's 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 three years cyborg. Like this is the cyborg. He just happened in three years later. That's more. He's like, all right, I'm loving myself. Let's have some fun. You know, <laughs> this is this is fair because yeah, this you, is this is cyborg just now starting. Right. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. But yeah, but Zack Snyder didn't do 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 a great job of expanding out um, cyborg in the sense that you should care about him more because he means more to the story compared to. Uh, basically, compared to to Whedon's cut, because Whedon's cut to me, they were just kind of like, well. He knows everything. He's like Vision. We need him because he knows everything. No one can beat him. <laughs> yeah. He's the closest thing to Superman, but smarter, like Superman Batman hybrid. Mm. Yeah. At least that's how it felt. So it was their Iron Man. Know. So Yeah, they're super Iron Man. Yeah. So yeah, Zack Snyder's um Aquaman. <sighs> Snyder. Okay. I, I I still stick with they I'm glad we can cut those things. But if you're talking about fleshing out the characters, uh Snyder did a better job. So I'm I'm gonna actually give this one a draw. <laughs> okay. Uh I'm gonna give this one a flat draw on this one. I think Snyder did a better job fleshing out the characters as far as it goes, but I think there was more personality in the weeding cut. Okay. That I liked. Um that I personally liked. Okay. All right. Steppenwolf. Whedon. Okay. We, I, like I said before, having his back, the way they flesh out his backstory of the reason why he did it made more sense than in the Snyder cut of why I don't, out of, out of the reasonings out of the both of them, Wes, we, Whedon did it a little bit better of explaining it more of his reasons, I guess. He had a better explanation for Wheaton's reasonings, better than Snyder to me. So Okay. Um I this one's a tough one because I, I told you I was torn about this one. I'm gonna go Whedon because he wasn't a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically. I felt I felt I felt like he had more of a fighting chance in this one. And it would have been interesting too, because if you would have asked me before um, seeing the Snyder cut, I would have been like, he was kind of a weak uh, villain. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I feel differently, kind of watching this in reverse. So it, it's a little, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. So I'm going to go with Whedon on this yeah. one. And last but not least, Lois Lane. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Superman. Now hang on. Now you what? didn't say Wonder Woman. I've been sitting here waiting for Wonder Woman. Oh, did I say Wonder Woman? You never oh, said sorry, Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Let's go. Let's go Wonder Woman first. Draw. Draw okay, yeah, but we can get one plus from me, and maybe that leans it over. She did not have the music behind her every time there was a scene. <laughs> Thank you, Weedon. Thank you, Weedon. <laughs> that helped me so much. I was like, I was waiting for it. I was like, all right, where's the music? Oh, thank God. Oh, God. I think we didn't even notice. It's like, this is too much, guys. Which FYI, thank you, Screen Rant, for bringing that up too as well. We 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 totally you mean recorded that episode yeah, oh, before even. Me. Yeah, you're right. Go on. I'm sorry. No, I'm talking to myself. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say we recorded the episode where Dermot was just like that damn music. I get <laughs> it. A... I get before, it. Before you guys mentioned it, I'm glad you guys pointed it out because I didn't notice it, but probably I was eating like peanuts or something like that during that time. Which, by the way, both directors are draw on the on their soundtrack they're both awful <laughs> oh me. you're gonna call it draw right, yeah they're both they're both awful to me all right um soundtrack was actually one of the topics too so draw but, draw but, from Dermot. i'll tell you my reason yeah yeah, yeah. anyways go on um so wonder woman i will give to, oh gosh this is rough you know i you am draw. going to give to whedon you're gonna give to whedon okay 
I'm going to give it to Whedon. I think I like the fact that she threw the lasso on Aquaman. I like the fact that she had, in some senses, it it seemed like she was more level headed. I'll give you that. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot about the argument. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'll, I'll go with Whedon on that. You're right. You're right. It's just that music like, killed me. Okay, anyways, yeah. Yeah, that music really did kill me. No, you're that right. We, was... Weed Wonder Woman's 10 times better. Yeah. So I, I, the, the hard part is like, you know, Zack Snyder's, like, she had to learn everything. And he, in this one, she knew. And she learned from the lore and she understood what needed to happen next once it once stuff got put in motion. I felt like she was smarter in this one. Mm. And so I'm going to go with Weedon's cut. But last but last and not least, of course, we talked about the grand finale. Superman, Jeremy. I feel like it's a draw. I want to say because I like Superman's return, but I like Wheaton's finale with Superman. Um, but I'm not going to do a draw. I'm going to pick overall. As much as I like the Snyder with him coming back, that was so badass. The sad part is that scene right there was the reason why I kept continuing to watch the movie. At least the Whedon one, you know, I feel like his ending was a better payoff. I'm going to go with Whedon Superman. Okay. I I will actually lean towards Snyder's Superman on this one okay. because I, I like exactly what Jeremy said. It's just like when he came back, man, that brother came back. <laughs> it was a damn good scene. And and the things about Jeremy and I is that we there's something about Superman. I mean, obviously there's reasons why we don't like Superman, but when he's able to just take it to that extra level, just let go. Yeah. The in in let go and you're just like that is so badass. Like you have to be in so much awe. Like you can hate that person, but you're in awe of that of that ability and them just being able to be portrayed that way. That you have to respect it. And I think Zack Snyder did a good job of that. And uh, I have to go with Zack Snyder because it's like Michael Jordan, right? I dislike Michael Jordan, but when I watched him play, I was just like, he's the best. He's, yeah, he, he can be. He can beat my favorite team by himself. But I mean, seriously, I hate this guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it, because the way Snyder did it. That's what gave me hype of Dark Side because yeah. Dark because it should be only Dark Side that should push Superman to that level. That's what I'm waiting for from all the cartoons, the comics. To me, what I have read and watched, Dark Side was the only one that pushed him to the edge. And that's what I want. And that right there was a good tease of like, okay, this is him letting loose. Now I want to see what would push him to do it when he's not like, when he's actually like, you know, normal. What's going to push him for that? And yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Mm-hmm. So we're done with the characters. When we're going mm-hmm. to the soundtrack, Jeremy's already made his opinions known. Draw. He's flat out even on this one. I will actually lead towards Whedon's soundtrack on this one because... A, I didn't hear that freaking hallelujah song, which already is a plus to me. Mm-hmm. And two, I think I think there was more modern rock that we didn't ended up choosing because you heard Icky Thump, I think, yeah. by uh, the White Stripes. And some of the things, I felt like there was more of a, a rock kind of BA feel to it. So I, I worked out for me. I feel that if Zack Snyder would change it up every so often – that would work out well, but everything has got to be freaking like a slow. Yeah, that's very true. Like slow, slow motion. Like everything is slow motion. So he's yeah. got to do the slow motion aspect of it. So next topic, the final battle. Which Whedon. way did you lean? Whedon. Whedon. Everybody had a better purpose to me instead of just waiting for the moment. Now, and I'm I'm actually going to take the hit that Stephen Wolf's death, the way Stephen Wolf went out was terrible compared to Snyder's the way he went out. But at the same time, the team was better, and I was going for that more than Stephen Wolf for it. So I'm going to pick Wheaton on this one. Okay, I will lean towards Snyder on this one, and 
Just because I think there was a bigger impact when it came to the Flash and Cyborg as far as meaning is concerned. And then you really felt when Superman jumped in and did his business. And more or less, Steppenwolf died. It's over. Like, we're done with Steppenwolf. We, we ain't got to see Steppenwolf again. Not in the Snyder Cut. Huh? Not in the Snyder Cut. Yeah, he got his head cut off. Oh, yes, right. And he, I forgot I, I, I forgot because he got thrown in the uh, portal. Yeah, the portal, yeah. He got his head cut off. He he gone. He gone. He dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the colonel. No, he dead. Yep. Well, I don't um, know, man. I think I think it would have been cool <laughs> because like Stephen Wolf getting away, it'd be cool in the second one that he dies by the hands of Dark Side to show how fearful of him. Cause that'd be a great yeah. build up. That'd be an awesome yeah, build up. Be, so, be, I don't have a problem with that at all. So But I it mean, is what it is. I, I get it. Yeah, it is yeah. I don't have a problem with that at all, but I, I do I do feel that. But I mean, the overall the overall aspect with the characters, is, is, I feel a little bit differently. But just if you're just taking the final battle scene for itself in the cinematics and all that stuff, I like the final battle scene in in uh, Zack Snyder's cut. Okay. And the last last but not least, PG thirteen versus R. R. Really. mm Hmm. I was fine with the PG-13. I was fine with the PG-13 Whedon's cut because I don't know if there was necessarily a need. What what part of Snyder's cut was R besides murdering? Uh... Cursing. Was it? Batman cursed. And oh. Cyborg cursed. Who else cursed? Cyborg. Uh, Cyborg. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe I didn't notice it too much. Mm-hmm. So, so Jeremy's going to go with Zack Snyder's R on this one, and I will go with the PG thirteen. I don't know if it necessarily needed to be. I know. R. Let me let me put it this way, Nom. I agree with both choices, but I always been the person of like R just gives you more freedom. So I'm like, just if I just want more freedom, that's me. There you go. I just want more freedom. There you go. So. And. Do you have anything else you want to compare on this, or do you want to call it? Good? Oh no, nah, man. Um, the running time, you know. I, no, oh. I, we already talked about that. I, I, no, 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 man. Um, I'm glad it's over. Yeah, I'm glad this is in the books. You know, I don't. E- either way, I'm all Justice League out, and I have no reason to go back to these two films. <laughs> yeah, you know. I was gonna say- if you got, if you the audience wants to tell us that uh, the runtime between the two movies that you felt the four hour movie was your jam, I would like to know in the comments why you felt that way. I respect that you felt that way, but uh, you know you could have done that movie in three hours and been fine, two and a half hours and still be good. Yes, I agree. So. So there wasn't. That's the only reason why we didn't bring up the comparison between the two because I think Jeremy and I were easy sweep on this one. Yeah. On on, on the on the on the hour and fifty nine minutes that we got for the the weeding cut. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I'm gonna tell you what. After you go, if you guys ever watch it the other way around, you're just like, "Woo, that was a breath of fresh air." Yeah. We I, done. That's the challenge. I want y'all. I want y'all to go the other way. You know, especially how, here's an idea. Have somebody join you that never done either one and watch the longest one and show and hear what he has to say, mm-hmm. and see if that works. It'd be interesting. And so, maybe maybe they like the weeding cut more for some for yeah. a reason. Yeah. And as always, we always end it with this one thing. Besides Jeremy telling us where we're at, <laughs> right? We always end it with Rotten Tomatoes, where Rotten Tomatoes are is going to tell you or us. Me and Jeremy, if we're critical or if we're, uh, if we are like you guys, like the people, like you, the people. So in this Justice League iteration that you and I, that Jeremy and I didn't watch because we watched Kong versus Godzilla instead. Yeah. <laughs> um, the PG-13, Zack Snyder's original quote unquote make that Josh Whedon took in for tomato meter critics at a 400 reviews gave it a 4 D percent four zero percent and the audience out of a hundred thousand plus 
surprised me, gave it a 71%. So yeah, all the hate that you guys had, that you, you guys had, you still gave this a 71%. What the hell? Mm. Haters. Haters. So, Jeremy, tell me way, which way you lean. And also tell me, since you saw these, do you go with your same comments on why people gave the Snyder Cut a 98%? Because they thought they may have thought this movie was so bad, even though they said it was a 71 Okay. But what are your thoughts on both? So, well, at, let's get this out of the way. I said this before. I'll say it again. Just because you you got a better style of a movie than the Whedon cut doesn't mean the movie itself is entertaining or good. Okay? It doesn't matter. I don't care what anybody says. Okay? Just because you got a longer or better edition of it doesn't mean the movie's good. This is not any different. Okay? I still... I, it's... it's it, the only enjoyable about this movie to me, it was shorter. The story and everything to me is still kind of boring. The Mother Box's story is kind of boring. You know, I Steven Wolf still doesn't feel threatful. No, everybody won. No one lost in no way. Still the same thing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the lowest. I'm the 40. And I know this movie is not for me. I will be coming back to. Um, the reason I still six wise 98 because people were happier with that cut. And I think that people have those rose color glasses on that they want to see more of the Snyder cut only because they just like that movie better than that one. But it doesn't mean that his next movie is going to be phenomenal either. It only, he, that one could be bad and then you say, we don't want to see any more of it, right? <laughs> so I'm just being real here. You know, I think we, we just cut some fat off that I agree with and some I don't agree with. But... It did work better for me personally, um, but I'm a forty. I'm a forty six. So, a forty. Yeah. Yep. I. Uh, you know the one thing that we didn't touch on. Uh, we don't need to. And I know. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Just we kidding. do have to in this one, in this sense because I think a lot, I think people will be like, "What the hell is wrong with y'all? Y'all didn't touch on this." Um, the fact that uh, Cyborg's dad died in uh, Snyder's cut versus this one. Right. That uh, Cyborg's dad didn't die. Um, did that make a difference to you one way or the other? No, because the mother boxes weren't really focused. They weren't. Like, Snyder Cut, he did win the detail. He, he made the mother box feel like they on the pedestal. Ween's Cut, they were just there for there. They were really focusing. You could tell Ween was really focusing on the characters more than what the story was doing. He was just making sure the characters were good enough. So you got characters against story. It depends yeah. what you want. Do you want more? Do you want a bet? You want more story storytelling? You got Snyder. You want better characters? To me, you get you go get the Wheaton. So because okay. of that, the dad because the, the dad was connected to the mother boxes in some way. If they don't care about the mother boxes story, his dad is pointless. He might as well be dead because they didn't care to talk about him. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I uh. So I, I fall into argument both ways on that one too as well because I think I think every superhero movie should have a loss of some sort to make it more meaningful, whether they lose one of the main cast or whatnot to make it more meaningful, which is what the Avengers Endgame did a good job of. The problem I have with the problem why I don't have with uh, the weeding cut and not killing off Cyborg's dad is is that I think for the Snyder cut it was too soon. It just I didn't build that much of a connection with the cyborg and his his backstory and his family that I cared all that much. So mm-hmm. super long way to get to this answer. Forty percent critics for me too as well. I left uh, Whedon's movie basically the same way I left Snyder's movie, where it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good. It was just there, mm-hmm. <laughs> and. The saving grace was this, the fact that it was a two-hour runtime, but there was a lot of things that I understand why Whedon made his cuts and did what he did because some some of the fat didn't need to get trimmed. And if that was what was told, is like, hey, I need you to cut this movie to a two-hour movie, then I don't think he did a bad job of doing it, personally. Yeah. 
So I'm going to go with the 40% too as well on the lower league. Also, I think just, overall just as a, Also too, just about the, one more thing about the dad thing. The re, your, I understand your point of view of like, you know, with the dad, you're glad he didn't kill them. He didn't kill them off and whatnot. But at the same time, if Snyder was to continue on, his dad would be in the background anyways. So either way, both answers don't work because the fact that like you flesh out his dad, but his dad is not going to, his dad dies compared to George Whedon character. They're going to just write him off anyways if they decide to continue on and they do the next like a Batman, the, 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 the apocalypse style. Right. Yeah. So it's an, it's an interesting way. So I think we kind of yeah. saved the bullet there that we don't have to explain what happened to that. Ah, he died. You you guys can put that together, right? We're, look at the world we're in. He didn't make it. Yeah. You, it was, you know, I, I think if you would have, I think if you would have skipped this one, make a second one, and then uh, ended up starting to slowly kill off. Of, because you know Lois Lane's going to die in the next movie. Mm-hmm. If, if you don't, if you, the audience, don't realize that Lois Lane is going to die, is going to die in the next movie, then you miss the interpretation of the entire end credits with the Joker <laughs> and Batman and his dream. Like you miss that entire, that entire thing. Lois dies. That's why Superman becomes evil. Spoiler alert. Yeah. But I think, I think saving, I said, I think you spend this movie building that relationship slowly and then using the next movie to end those relationships. mean, more, mean it, it means more. Okay. In my opinion. Gotcha. But I mean, I don't think we didn't we didn't really touched on Cyborg's story for us to care for it either way. But I'm just right. saying for Snyder for Snyder, I think it was too soon. Yeah. Okay. But right. I do agree. I think he's going to be written off anyways. But if you kill him in the next movie, it makes more of a difference than it would be this movie. I think <laughs> he'd be an after talk. Where is he? He it, didn't make it. Yeah. Because at least at least Cyborg would be like you know he would have more anger and more reason to be like you know upset versus that or like, they'll do a flashback of like the event or something like that that he died yeah. off in some shape or form so yeah. yeah so I guess the ultimate Rotten Tomato is uh which which cut will we take Whedon or uh, Zack Snyder it's all about that length man I I I'm sa- I'm sorry there are. There are movies out there that are four hours, three hours long, but those pick like Lawrence of Arabia, all those. I feel like they did better with their time than I feel like with Zack Snyder, and I don't want to waste my four hours for that movie again. So I'm just doing the I'm doing the two hours because it's shorter. That's it. That's it. I do it because it's two hours. Yeah, it was the Snyder cut? First off, I think German. I'll speak for German this because I'm pretty sure he agrees. We both agree with the fact that the matter is that a director should have his vision shown. That's that's all I'm going to say. On that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that I have to enjoy four hours of a movie. I also go with Whedon's cut because I think Whedon's cut basically hit the points that Snyder's cut did, but Snyder flushed it out more, but with two hours more movie to flush it out, mm-hmm. like. I don't know if it was necessarily worth this whole the the whole. Um, to me, it wasn't worth the whole uh, the whole release Snyder's cut. I'm happy that he was able to because he got his vision out there. But uh, I am not on board with this culture of us like, well, let's re- let's bring back Snyder's uh, vision overall in general. If Snyder, you want to make a Netflix deal that allows you to make make a, a whole universe of your own have at it but i think it is time to move on from this let it breathe and if you want to re- if everybody wants to restart the justice league and dc universe then so be it because i think the start and stop of this snyder uh, snyder snyder dc universe has been a fail to me so okay all right with that thank you all so much for watching this watching and listening to this special, um, this special edition of our show with the Justice League, um, there'll be more theme specials. One actually coming soon um, after this one. Um, but thank you all. As you know, that we are part of we are part of the In Game Boss program, a network game and other variety show. So please check out all our great shows. We'll have a we have a link to a link tree that will give you access quick to all our stuff: Facebook, Twitter, 
all that stuff. So you can definitely uh, check that stuff out. And if you're on YouTube, don't be afraid to subscribe. You know, leave a comment down below. We would love for you to be part of this and enjoy the rest of our other great content and whatnot. And, you know, for the listeners, thank you so much for listening to us. And um, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm worn out. I'm worn out. This, uh, this has been a voyage, really. Six hours. Six hours. So I'm, I'm, I don't regret watching these two movies at least once. But I'm glad it was more fun talking about it. So, uh, not anything you want to add before we uh, head out? Uh, stay tuned to our next uh, our next uh, shows. I think they're going to be pretty enjoyable. I think you guys are going to like like uh, what we got coming out for you guys. And uh, Jeremy, I just want to prepare you. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a lot of dislikes on this one. But uh, hey, man. Hey. It is what it is. If you dislike it, if people dislike it, they dislike it. But you know, hey, yeah, drop drop a comment. Yeah, and let us hey, know. Yeah, that's that's part of the conversation. I want to hear people's point, different point of views. Maybe I'll turn around again. I don't know. All I know is, I'm glad it's over. So with that, thank you so much, and we will catch you on our next episode. <laughs>